Uh, hang on. Yeah, it's a quiet Monday. So it's one of those days. It's one of those days. Uh, it's been overcast and sort of, it's just starting to sprinkle here in Vegas. Um, yeah. Like, I think we're going to have a nice, I, I think we're going to have a quiet stream. I don't think there's going to be many people here. It just feels like that to me. We'll see. Either way, I want to do some more reading today. I'm going to get more of those, uh, more of those sections done. Um, so we'll get some of that done. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, the weekend didn't go off quite the way I expected it to. So I'll have a midweek, I'll have a Tuesday, uh, well, I'll have a Wednesday and Thursday DGen story time for you as well. Um, but yeah, I've got one from the weekend. I was expecting to have two. Um, but just means we get more, more DGen story times. 
in total. Um, I haven't, I haven't been looking at the news. I know like a bunch of people have been pumping fucking stories into the, like Cupcake's been pumping fucking stories all day today. Um, hello. Uh, we're just getting started. We're just sort of talking. Um, let's see. What did... What did Cupcake drop, uh, drop in there? Uh, Puerto Rico, most vaccinated. Uh, the idiot that got fucking punched out for being a douchebag. Texas man charged with murder after shooting someone in a car outside something. Um, outside his home. Told people, uh, told police it was self-defense. Um, somebody was just sitting in a parked car outside his home, so he went out and shot him, sounds like. Yeah, stand your ground. Um, let's see. Trump's truth social... Um, bans telling truth about his Twitter rival. Um, also, they're going to get sued by, um, I forget who run, who owns the license set, but they haven't published their, their code. Um, the Twitter network, uh, the Twitter, the Trump social media network is built off of, I think, Mastodon. Is it Mastodon that they're built off of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They haven't published their code as required by the license set. Um, and so... If the um, if the license holders don't actually pursue legal action, they risk invalidating their own license set, um, and so they have to sue him. Um, so, yeah, that's a thing that'll be happening sh- shortly too. Uh, and then uh, let's see, fucking, isn't this old? This is old as fuck, right? Um, when did this get published? And why is YouTube hiding the data publishing on things? Uh, four months. There you go. Um, yeah, that John Cena apologizing for calling Taiwan a country bullshit. Um, uh, Beastical, I think that's a misreading. You don't pay for it. It's open source. They didn't. They didn't pay for it. That's 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 a misreading. So, um, yeah. And is there anything else that I mean? There was a bunch of fucking stuff. Uh, some video or something of fucking Tim Scott asking why uh, Kristen Cinema won't uh, meet with constituents, only wealthy donors and lobbyists. She replies, don't touch me. I uh, love it. Uh, let's see. Jim Banks apparently was misgendering the uh, new head of, um, I forget, the, the agency, but the first openly transgender four-star officer, uh, Rachel Levine. Um, so he got his Twitter pulled. Um, <laughs> DeSantis is uh, Florida Surgeon General was asked to leave a state senator's office for refusing to wear a mask. Um, and Compton Psycom. Hey there. Thanks for the resub, man. Um, and Spin Bones. Thanks for the follow. Um, yeah. Yeah. The this, this Senator uh, Tino Polsky, uh, immunocompromised. Twitter's apparently doing some NFT bullshit. Don't care. I, yeah, I mean, I, I, t- no, no, no. I had that Tim Pool fucking bullshit. Um, Tim Pool. All right, both those Tim Pool fucking Twitter, uh, Twitter comments are just functionally, well, you know. Um, Apparently, Keemstar is retiring. Um, okay. Hassan was talking about Black Hammer. Well, welcome to the fucking party, moron. Could he... Uh, thank you kindly, Spin Bones. Um, yeah, could uh, could Hassan not, uh, not notice the issue with the grifters that are uh, Black Hammer from the heights of his mansion? Um... Uh, Gemma, you know, we'll see. We'll see, Gemma. Um, it's it's difficult to see the news headlines when you're, you know, it, it, it's you, you got to sweep away all the cash first, right? You got to, oh, fuck, fuck, where'd that money fall from? Hold on, let me just, all right, all right, uh, let me try and scroll. Jesus Christ, more money, right? Yeah, it, it's difficult, I understand. I, I, I sympathize with him. I, I, I sympathize with poor Hassan. Um, but anyway, 
Um. Oh. Let me refresh my stuff over here. Um. Oh yeah, and all that shit about uh, the um, congressional accomplices for January sixth. A couple of the couple of fuckers they arrested did what they do, and they rolled. Right, like that's that's what they do. Um, the two sources say they were in direct regular contact with Republican representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, Mo Brooks of Alabama, Madison Cawthorn of North Carolina, Louis Gomert of Texas, and Lauren Boebert of Colorado, while planning the January sixth events. So there you go. Um. That's adorable that you think Tim Pool is okay. Whatever, I don't. The level of theory I'm gonna be, uh, be doing today. I, just, I don't. I can't. I can't drag myself through that fucking sludge. Um. Oh, we're gonna do a bunch of reading today. We're going to do a bunch of fucking reading today. I don't know how much we're going to get through, but um, I can't refute it either. Yeah, there's tons of fucking Democrats that come out with conservative takes, are socially and fiscally conservative, and also support Donald Trump. It's a common, it's a common theme. It's a common theme. Hold on, cats, cats DMing me. How can a nearly dead man be so fucking based? Chomsky doubles down on his previous call for the state to segregate the unvaccinated from society. Quote, how can we get food to them? Well, that's actually their problem. Jesus Christ. Wow. All right. I'll give that a look later. Um, uh, Fotech, no. No. Um, people ask me that question on a fairly semi-regular basis. Um, no. Consume all the, the, all the media sources and then use, um, use common sense, discretionary logic, skepticism, a little bit of common sense to parse out the information for yourself. Separate the wheat from the chaff. Learn to do that. Learn to separate the wheat from the chaff. Um... If you do that, then you don't have to worry about that. Then you just consume the content. And then you, oh, well, that was clearly propaganda. Well, that was fucking biased bullshit. Holy shit, logical fallacy. Right, like that's, it's like, oops, scientific illiteracy. Oh, wow, literal literate, uh, illiteracy. All right, like, you know, you just, you just start parsing it yourself at that point. That's my biggest recommendation to you. Oh, cat, yeah. <sighs> I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd go to bat with fuck loads. I'd go to bat over fuck loads, but, I mean, you'd at least... <sighs> I don't know. Not even gonna touch it. Um, <clears throat> all right. Oh, uh, right wingers like to toss around fucking JFK Democrat all the time. Um, 
Mike Pence's family were a bunch of JFK Democrats, actually. Um, generally speaking, a JFK Democrat is a, so, uh, a social conservative, but also a big government supporter. Right? They're they're not they're not small government. They're pro big government. They're just socially conservative. They tend to be Catholic. Yeah. Fox Muse. <laughs> Fox Muse. Um You say that, you ascribe yourself that way, but have you analyzed yourself through uh, like a lens of analysis utilizing a properly um, calibrated Overton window? Or did you just use based on societal standards and performative values of today? Have you ever actually sat down with somebody who understands political science or civics or economics and calibrated that perspective? Or do you just use fucking, what, Trump as your signpost in the road or Pelosi and Schumer as your signpost in the road? Like, by what standard? I'm damn near an anarchist. How so? What is an anarchist, by the way? <clears throat> what is an anarchist, just out of curiosity? <laughs> that is actually a fair defense of fucking like just watching Fox News sec huh? like they, they, they actually go to less effort to hide their bias so it's actually easier to parse yeah total dad yeah I'm serious I'm serious. What is an anarchist? You said you're damn near an anarchist. I want to know what an anarchist is. Please, inform me. I, I can't, I can't wait, right? Like, I, I uh, Christians are a pain in my ass, always have been. Yeah, I mean, I get it. Um, I, Kat, I, I agree. I agree. There you go, Wither. Fair enough. I, I, I'm down with just, you could, you, you could abstract that to Abrahamic religions. Yeah. Um, total dad. I have over 10 years of theory experience with anarchism and probably 15 years of in the street direct action experience with anarchism. I don't need to go Google that. I actually can define it, but here's the thing. You make claims to be an anarchist, but you can't give me even a sentence or two on what is anarchism? I'm damn near an anarchist. What is an anarchist? I'm not a right winger. Mm, have you ever actually analyzed that through perspective of a properly calibrated uh, Overton window? Y you can't answer any of these questions. And this is, this is my point of contention. Uh, not only can I, I've had to do it so many times, Katsumoto. There's a channel command. And it's not so much a uh, American version of anarchism, but a political science and somebody who's lived it version of anarchism. Yes. It's a lens of analysis that's utilized in, uh, in figuring out whether a, a system of power is justified. Right? It's about a collapsing down of hierarchical power structures. It's about forming hierarchical organizational modalities. It's about eliminating those unjust authority mechanisms, replacing them. Right? This, is, this is what anarchism is about. But in the words of Emma Goldman, it's a network of ideas. 
We much prefer it that way, right? There is no monolithic anarchism. There is no utopian anarchism. That, I, Katsumoto, that is the worst fucking s sentence I've ever seen in my life. A for two. So like capitalism, but not capitalism. Correct me if I'm wrong. That, that I, I don't even know what to do with those words. That was just terrible. So you're wrong. <laughs> I, I don't. Capitalism is about a privatization of the common, uh, common goods and the means of production, right? Like that's what capitalism hinges upon. It hinges upon the privatization of common goods and the means of production, right? Anarchism is not about that. Your dog's name is Catboy. Nice. A black palm ski named Catboy. Nice. I like it. I, I, I dig the irony. Um, so did, um, where's our, where's our total dad here? Where's, bruh, I thought you wanted to have this conversation. What'd you do to him, cup, fucking cupcake? Y'all can't scare him off like that. Let's see, what'd you do? I don't see, I don't see anything you did. I don't fucking, yeah, I don't see anything that's fucking. Hey, Cassie. <clears throat> Is he gone already? Hmm, I don't know, we'll see. Um. Total dad is really only barely dad. I um, think he's looking up the definition of anarchism. Yes, yes. Let's go with that dictionary definition for sure. Quick, Wikipedia faster, man. Wikipedia faster. Maybe his internet's slow. He's having trouble getting the website to load. Channel suggestion, me, 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 dance for 50,000 channel points. Uh, no. Um... Uh, good to hear, Peaky. It 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 uh, it helps. It helps people get over that mental hurdle. Sometimes here's the McDonald's Wi-Fi going on. Uh, <laughs> you call into question his credentials for that username. I've yet to see him make even one pun. Um. Oh, um. Mm. Um, that's on you, brother. Uh, oh. So, y'all want to do DGen story time? It's not. It's not that fucking. It, it's. It's okay. Look. Uh, oh. All right. I mean, it's going to be, the next few weeks are going to be kind of rep repetitive as far as D-Gen story time goes, because I'm specifically, um, oh God. All right. Yep. Yeah, zippy. Hey, resolution. Yeah, that's that's not what an anarchist is, Total Dad. That's that's not what an anarchist. You're just an anti-statist, right? Like you you just you just don't want there to be a government telling you what to do. That's all. You're you're essentially yeah, like yeah, like wh what what the fuck, man? Right? Like that? No. <laughs> just no. <laughs> wow. Just wow. Um. Yeah, that's not even close, man. That's not even close. It's 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 not even in the fucking ballpark. It, it, you missed the entire point of anarchism, right? Like that's it's you, it, no, like literally. Yeah, it's it's wow. 
Um, all right, DGen story time. Um, the weekend didn't go quite go. The uh, oh, oh, okay, hang on. Zippy wanted me to clip this, so we'll start clipping DGen story times. Um, I wish I had clipped the the previous ones, but if anybody wants to track them down, um, and give me timestamps on previous episodes, by all means, I'll clip them. Uh, I'll, I'll we we're gonna try and keep a keep a list of them, um, or like keep a playlist. Um, but if you happen to be listening to old episodes and you start like you notice a DJ story time, um, by all means, give me the timestamps. I'll I'll clip about I'll clip out the uh, the pieces and put them into a playlist. So, like finding them is gonna be a fucking thing. Um. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll fucking. Nope, I gotta actually push push the button. I just kind of fucking. Eh. All right, so like I was saying, um, this weekend didn't go off quite the way I was expecting it to. Um, I had contact my I, I my dom had contacted me um, because that's the way it works. Um, the, except if they set up expectations, um, you know, there are check-ins and shit like that, right? Um, depending on your particular arrangement. Um, but, um, he had contacted me and asked, asked how I was doing that sort of thing. And I mentioned that the neuropathy, neuropathy had flared and it was pretty bad. And he was, you know, he's like, well, let me know if we need to cancel or reschedule or anything like that. And I informed him, like, it, actually, no, that's the opposite. Right. Like refocusing the central nervous system. Right. Like if, if my feet are on fire and you like spank my ass red. Right. Like I can't notice my feet. Right. It gives me a break. Right. There's a difference between the pain that you you can't control and the pain you can control. Right. Like this is why people like pinch down and bite their cheek when they get an injection or something like that or they get blood drawn. Right. There's a difference between as dark as it is, this is the fundamental psychology under, uh, that underpins, um, self-harm, right? Like cutting and that sort of thing, right? Like if I can't deal with the other thing, I can do a thing that I can control and it, it affects the psychology and the central nervous system differently than the uncontrolled pain, right? So, you know, I was like, no, like that's, that's quite the opposite. And he actually said, he said, actually, I had somebody, uh, I had a sub years ago, um, who would request to be fisted anytime. Like they, they had chronic pain, like intractable chronic pain. He said, anytime it flared up, he'd actually, he'd be like, could you, could you fist me? Right. And I, I was like, yeah, so you get it. Right. Like he's like, oh, okay. Well then in that case, he's like, do you, you know, do you want to do something this weekend? And, um, I was like, yeah, potentially like I, I, I had, I had plans for this weekend. Um, for sure. Like I, I, I knew I, I had, uh, an event scheduled. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, keep that one close to my chest, right? I'm going to play these cards close to my chest because that one will be Thursday's DGen story time because long story short, what was supposed to happen either Saturday or Sunday um, got rescheduled at the last, pretty close to the last minute on Sunday, um, over to Wednesday night after stream. All right. And then, so like Thursday, I will have a, a an interesting DJ and story time for you for sure. Whatever, however that plays out. Um, but so Saturday night, um, you know, Saturday evening rolls around. I got some gaming in with, uh, with the crew. Um, we were, you know, we were playing and I was doing stuff. Like I'd take, I'd, occasionally I'd be like, yeah, I'll be right back. Right. You know, shit like that. And I, I'm doing clean out, right. I'm doing clean out and we don't need to go into the, we've done the clean out routine before we, we know, like if you're, if you're an, a, a viewer of the DJ and story time, you know what that entails. It's a whole fucking thing. So, you know, I'm playing fucking video games uh, with the boys, whether you are, whether you identify a, uh, uh, as a boy or not, when you're playing on the server and we're hanging out, you're just one of the boys. That's how it works in my head. Sorry. Um, so, you know, I'm doing that and I'm sort of like coming up against it, right? Like the time frame is, is pushing, right? It's, it's, it's fucking pushing. And I'm just, you know, the day is just fucking, the day is getting away from me, right? It was just getting away from me. When I was talking to my dom 
earlier in the day. Um, you are Zippy. You're still you're still one of the boys. Um, the routine. The routine. Um, when I was talking to him earlier in the day, he was stressed too. He was at the collision shop. Apparently, he has fucking his vehicle. Yeah, his his car got fucking tag dinged. Um, so he you know he was having to deal with that. And apparently somebody who um, was supposed to, like, pick him up, a friend, didn't, like, show up on time and those sorts of things. Like, we, we all know that, that, that rigmarole, right? Whole fucking thing, right? So, I was like, tell you what. I was going to make this suggestion. I was going to ask if this was something that you were interested in after the event. But... Why not give him something to look forward to, right? Like, I, you know, he's had a rough day. I'm having a rough day physically. Let's, you know, it's a two-way street. So I'm like, tell you what, how about we have a night of fisting and massage? I'm like, I have had countless professional massages, like world-class, top shelf, the best that money can buy, Massages in my life and not this fucking shitty fucking Asian parlor bullshit where, you know, <laughs> no, like professionals, like professionals that work on athletes, professionals that work on people that, yeah, like need massages, right? So I'm like, I, I, I know what I'm doing. I know my way around it. And as somebody who has chronic pain and has stress and carries it in, you know, definitely carries the stress load in my body, I know how and where to work on it. Um, and I also know that a lot of people, like from experience, I know a lot of people don't get the massage. Like if you ask your partner for a massage, you're getting a shit massage, right? Like they're not, they're not going to use enough, uh, they're not going to use enough pressure. They're not going to lean into it. They're going to go for a short amount of time. They're fucking right. Like this is, this is why you pay somebody to give me, to give you a massage, right? Is to like 90 minutes, your mind bitch and fucking lean into it, right? Like work for this, right? That's why you pay for it. So, like, you don't... Every part, every massage from, like, a boyfriend or a friend I've ever had is absolute dog shit. It's rubbish. It's fucking rubbish. Unless you happen to know a professional masseuse. And in which case, um... Fucking... In, if you happen to know a professional masseuse, in which case, asking them to give you a massage in their downtime is bullshit unto itself. Go fuck yourself. Um... Is it even a massage if my muscles don't regret my decision? Marcus gets it. You should walk out of the, it should, it should borderline hurt. It should hurt. It should hurt. It should hurt. It should be work to get that massage. And then you should walk out with a dopamine and fucking serotonin and an adrenal response. Like literally you should walk out high as a kite. You should, I have walked out of massages giggling. I was so fucking high from, uh, from the chemical load in my brain, right? Like that's, you should have to work for it, right? So I know what I'm doing. I know my way around it. And I know he has a massage table because I've been on it. Um, I've been paddled on it. I've been spanked on it, right? Like I know he has one. Also, I've been massaged on it. N massaged, by the way. I mean, you know, let's let's you know, um, <laughs> Cassidy. Um, so, you know, I'm like, how about we have a nice fisting massage, right? You help. You scratch my back. <laughs> you scratch. You scratch my anus. I'll scratch your back, right? Like let's fucking you know let's let's work at it. Um. Yes. Yeah. Usually a resolution. It's usually a, it's usually a, a way to get into their pants, by and large. Um. So. Why not? He's like, yeah, definitely. That sounds like a good. That sounds like a great idea. Right. Um. Sure. So you know, like I said, just playing games with the boys and fucking doing the clean out routine and just just the day's getting away and it's just it's just one of those things and I'm rushing. And I, you know, I get to that point where, all right, it's time to um, go from square one, right? Like, general, generally speaking, here is Kai's policy on anal sex. I don't start from scratch, right? You know that moment? Look, I don't know how many of you have ever fucked somebody in the ass or been fucked in the ass. Right? I, I I don't know uh, what your what your deal with it is. 
Um, but entry is not always pleasant for the receptive partner, for the, the for uh, for the, the the person penetrating. I'm sure it's you know whatever you know. I'm, I I don't know. It, it seems it seem they seem to have a decent time. That's all I'm saying. Um, exactly. Yes, Marcus. That's 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 my policy. That's my policy. If you're if you're fucking me, you're not fucking a a just a like a f- fresh ass, right? I I've worked some some butt plugs, right? I've 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 put something in there to get the process started so that you can just go for it, right? And I don't have to worry about that moment of ow, right? Like cuz I don't know what kind of top you're going to be. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you're just gonna be the kind that just fucking throws it in balls deep. I don't know if you're the kind that tentatively takes a poke. I don't. I don't know what kind of fucking top you are, right? Uh, so, like, I'm gonna prepare. Um, I'm gonna prepare. Well, cat, that's where muscle control comes in. See, here's the thing. Just because you loosen it up and you get it, cat. Uh, using a butt plug is essentially a warm up routine for working out, right? It's stretching. It, it's stretching before the the exercise, right? You're still in control of the muscle. It's just a matter of it's warmed up. It's 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 ready to like it's you're not you're not just taking off from a sprint without having done some stretches and some warm up exercises, right? Like that's that's the logic behind it. It's it's a muscle set just like any other muscle set. Um, it doesn't blow it out unless you've completely wrecked yourself, right? It's not like you're fucking blown out for the night. It's just a matter of can I fucking, you know, sort of thing. So, um, (laughs) Rev, um, so I'm, I've talked about the plug set before, right? You know, I've got like four sizes. They're, they're, they're not the one, two, three, four, but for me, I reference them as one, two, three, four. Um, and I mean, we've talked about what four looks like, right? Um, Honestly, I think it's a little big, bigger than that, quite frankly. Um, okay, it's comparable. Just want to check. Um, no, no, no. But uh, I just wanted to check whether it was actually comparable. And I want to hold it next to it. So, um, so I'm running out of time anyway, and I I don't I'm I'm punctual for these sorts of events. Um, no, basically, I just I just wanted to do, just for my own like spatial reasoning. So I when I do do that for you guys like you know is it is it a comparable size that's that's what i'm looking for um i take a couple of deep hits of poppers and i slam number three in just Normally I start at two. Two is no problem. But three is breathe, breathe, breathe. Right? (sighs) I, you know, I know I can do it. It's just a matter of like, you know, get everything in my bag, get everything loaded up get myself prepared the way he prefers me um locked that it you know locked away yeah um so yeah hop in the vehicle and Every light. Every fucking light. 
and not only every light, the f second light I hit, which is one of a main intersection, it fucks up and skips our cycle. So I'm sitting there for two full cycles. I'm I, I, at that point, at that point, I just checked out mentally. I just checked out mentally. I'm like, I am, I, I have two options in that situation. I'm going to lose my fucking mind and I'm going to be raging. I will rage the fuck out, right? I will either just lose my fucking mind and I will be screaming. I mean, literally screaming in the car. Like I'll be hitting the steering wheel and I will be screaming, right? Or I just disassociate. But like, done. All right, I just check the fuck out. That's, that's, uh, wither. See previous comment. Can't get boner. <laughs> just pointing out. Um, it can try, but it won't be successful. Um, yeah, I, some, yeah, some sense. I, I just, so like, you know, I've got my rage issue under control in the last bunch of years. Right. So I know, like, I'm like, I have an option here, like either just or lose it. Um, so I just sort of checked the fuck out and drove the rest of the way there, hitting every single fucking light. Um, <clears throat> and I get there and, you know, standard policy applies. The door is unlocked in preparation for me. He, he leaves the door unlocked for me. He's not getting up and opening the door for me. That's, that's, that's not something, you know. So the door is unlocked. Um, and, um, oh, cat, fucking j just, I, I probably murdered somebody in the ring. Um, walk in, strip down. That's, that's immediate. You know, you, you greet him. And you immediately start stripping because that's the, remember I told you the two rules, um, no clothes and hug on the way out, right? That's, that's the two hard set rules all the time. Um, so walk in, he's sitting in his chair, he's watching a bit of TV. Um, I set my stuff down in the corner where it, you know, has come to belong, um, and I walk over and, you know, it's, it's, it's amicable. It's not like, it's not the most rigid of scenes that, um, I've participated in. Some would have you like literally in an exposed position on your knees as soon as you enter sort of thing. Right. He's, um, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's no, he's not opening a door for me. That's, that's not his job. Um, He's, he's, but it is, it is uh, besides some of the structure, he's, he's actually like, if I had to say like on a 10 scale for like the most strict domineering doms, right? Rigidity, or like rigidity within a dom structure. I'd say he's probably like a five or a six. He's not, he's by far not the, the most strict I've ever had. Um, and so, you know, walk over, stand there at atten at attention. Um, and you know, he, he does the quick inspection, you know, how's the, <laughs> how's the piercing healing, that sort of thing. Um, and you know, spin around. <sighs> I spin around and he goes, oh, you know, I didn't tell you to put a plug in. Yeah. He said, actually, I kind of wanted to see what you did, how you stretched from zero. And I said, but it's okay. He said, I don't mind. Whew. 
right? Because that that was that close. Yeah, like your resolution gets it. Like, you know, fuck it. That was that close, right? Like, that's that's. Yeah, like. Okay. Duly noted. He's that kind of dom. Don't think for yourself. If he doesn't say it, it's not expected. If he says it, it's expected. Got it. Duly noted. Right? Check. Got it. Right? He's not the pattern setting type of dom. Right? He will explicitly elucidate details if necessary. Otherwise, those details weren't there. So it's not a thing. Got it. All right. Still learning. Still learning. Figuring him out. Figuring him out. He's figuring me out. You know, it's a give and a take, and we're, we're still learning. Right? Okay, cool. All right? He's like, all right, let's go up. Um, I, I took over a bottle of fist powder, which is essentially, um, it's just, it's emulsifying agent for all intents and purposes. It's just medical grade emulsifying agent. Um, and cause we had talked about it and, you know, he was like, oh, I'd like to try some of that. You know, I'd never even seen that one, never heard about it. Like, cause it's, it's Euro certified. It's, you could use it in a gynecologist's office even, right? Like it's, it's actually certified stuff. Um, I'm like, so I'm like here, he's like, oh, well, you know, I don't really want to make it tonight. I'm like, you know, it's fine here. And he starts to hand the bottle back to me. I'm like, no, 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 just keep it, sir. I'm like, just hang on to it. Um, besides I have another bottle. Um, and we, you know, I, I follow, you guys know the deal. He puts it on the, the kitchen counter actually. And we continue on upstairs. Um, and you know, I'm, observant right i'm constantly looking reading that sort of thing um and as we pass the landing um i glance and i glance into his bedroom and he's got the massage table set up in his bedroom right? because now the the side room the playroom has this the the chair that i described from the first time and then now it has this full fucking professional swing installation as well right there's no room for a massage table in there at this point so he's got it set up in the uh, in the bedroom and i'm i'm grinning he turns around he's like what i'm like i just noticed where the massage table was there you know he's like yeah you know yeah there's no room in here and you know i'm like no no it's fine you know it's just 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 curious whether I was going to massage you on your bed or the massage table or how this would work. He's like, eh, just, you know, I set it up in there. I'm like, cool. You know? Um, so at this point, you know, we we're sort of like, we're getting to be a little old hat at it, right? Like we, we know each other's sort of rhythms to a little bit and, I set my stuff down here. I take the, the you know, the tube of poppers. I take my uh, my phone because you better believe I document. Um, I, I, I take photos. Um, I take photos. Um, and, you know, he pulls the, st the, the, the step stool out, puts it there so I can hop up. I fucking fuck him into the swing, that sort of thing, right? And we, we you know, we've, and we've adjusted the sling. The sling is literally adjusted and measured for me, right? Like that's, we've, we've done that at this point. This thing is custom set to me right i will know if somebody else is in that sling um <clears throat> marking my territory um but yeah so uh, yeah we I, I i hop um i i hop in and he you know he's got everything ready um we don't do the shaving this time he's he's you know he's he just i think it was kind of fetish kink for him i think he just wanted to shave me I think it's a thing for him. I think he just wanted to do it. Um, he goes into the other room and he comes back and he is buck ass naked. This is the first time I've seen him naked. He's never been nude around me thus far. Um, <laughs> Marcus, I will, I will show you, I will tell you how later in this story. I will literally tell you how. Um, so, yeah, he's naked, and so I'm, I'm of course doing this. Like, all right, so you're, you're, you're in the sling, and you're slightly like, you know, inverted to a certain extent, and you know, your head's here. I start rolling off to the side a little bit, and he's, he's like, he's like, what? I'm like, oh no no, this is the first time I've gotten to see, see your dick. Like, I'm just, just, just looking. 
just looking. You know, there's no way that someone like me is like penis. Like, right? It's fucking. It's gonna. I'm gonna look. Right. I. I. I gotta look. Um. And he's pierced as well. He's got a PA. So I'm like, you know. And then just, he's like, so. So what? I don't know. Just you know, looking at your piercing. Look at what's going on down there. No, no, no. You know. Um. Just enjoying myself. Um. Yeah, I know, right? Cat. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, hold on. No, I've got a tablet. I'll fucking, I'll just fucking. All right. So, <laughs> um, so what I'm going to need is I'm going to need you to go here and then cross over here. Now, um, so yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm taking in the, the eye candy, right? And I mean, he's an older dude, right? Like this isn't, if you're expecting some fucking tight 35 year old or 25 year old fucking eight pack fucking, you know, he's an older dude, right? Like, so you, you set your expectations appropriately, right? But I mean, he's not horribly fat. He's, he's got extra weight on him. He's definitely like, you know, what I would classify as, you know, slightly overweight, but at that age, you definitely want the extra weight, right? Like, so perfectly looking, you know, perfectly decent looking man, right? Nothing out of the ordinary, just a typical white dude, right? Yeah, dad bod, right? Like it's, it's, you know, so I'm just enjoying, you know, actually seeing him naked, right? Like that's, that's, that's something I haven't gotten to see yet. Um, so he sits down and he, you know, the gloves up and starts going at it. And at this point we're actually conversational about it, right? Like he and I can have a conversation. Like I know you're it, like, most people would expect this scene to be like, you know, sexy time, fucking dirty talk, that sort of thing, right? We're talking shop, right? Like, he's he's literally, like, you know, he takes the, the plug out and he's, you know, starting to work, right? Um, we're talking shop, right? We're, we're literally just talking about events and our day and how we feel and pain and past partners and, you know, and I, I noticed, I'm like, you, you actually, you know, he said, yeah, like he said, I'm finally getting back into the rhythm with this because it's been a while since I've actually had somebody who wanted to be fisted. He said, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, like I still haven't got my patterns down that like I like to put the paper towels on my right hand side. And I noticed, I'm like, you're actually using your left hand. And he said, yeah, I'm like, but you're right-handed. He said, no, I'm left-handed. I'm like, then why do you use your right hand to reach for a towel? You use your right hand to uh, reach for the wine bottle and you drink using your right hand. And he looks at me and I'm like, yeah, I notice things like this. Sue me. Like, right. This is, this is observation that I make, right? Like this is the sort of thing that I'm paying attention to when I really switch it on as a sub. Like these are the sorts of things, right? He's leading all the time with his right hand. I'm like, why the fuck, why the fuck do you use your, you know, right hand dominant for everything? He said, you know, I've never really thought about it. I said, are you partially ambidextrous? He said, no, I've never really thought about it. He said, but it's probably just because I grew up in a right handed world and I'm used to like everything being set up for the right hand. I'm like, you know, yeah. And so I'm like, you know, I fucking... Where this is, this is okay. So, this guy has this in me, right? Like, this in me, at least, right? Like, um, and so he not at this, not at this moment. If you want, there's a channel can command for it, but we're in the middle of a, a story. Um, exclamation anarchism will get you that definition that you're looking for. Um, so. He's got his hand inside me, right? And we're having a conversation. Um, yes, oh, well, that's the thing, Rev. We're having a conversation about handedness and how he grew up in a right-handed society. And, like, this is this is the level of conversation we have, right? Uh, so it's very, it's very down-to-earth, Right? It's, it's, it's very down to earth experience, right? Like we, we are actually just conversing as two sort of people while he's doing this. And there's moments that it becomes overwhelming. Hey, Kez, just smell a DJ story time. There's moments when it becomes overwhelming, right? Like I will literally be in the middle of a response to him, 
right? And we're talking about literal, um, like, uh, the molecular structure. And because sinister and, the, 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 like, sinister, right, the, the, the Latin term for left-handed, right, is uh, so... We're talking about it from a molecular, uh, from a chemist's point of view, because he's a trained chemist. Um, and um, uh, so, like, you know, he says, we even use it in chemistry for, you know, when a molecule is constructed or the spin is, uh, like, clockwise. So it spins, uh, it, so it spins to the left, right? Like, it, we use the sinister uh, um, moniker for that as well. Um, and so, like, this is, we're just conversing right and like you know i'll be in the middle of a statement and then it's just fucking you know fucking uh, <laughs> you know you have that moment that he he because he's he's literally working the muscle right like he's working it from all sides so there's like he's and you can feel the knuckles, you can feel the expand of the fingers. And so there's a time when, you know, there's less than your maximum and then there's your, that's the limit, right? We, we've, we've stretched to that point. And when you hit that moment, when you hit that mark, you know, it gets your attention. Let's just put it that way. Um, there's, there's not much to... Uh, <clears throat> The input output for the system sort of uh, gets maximized, um, and you just sort of have a moment. Um, but like literally, we just sort of roll through those. It, it's it's just that it's that's it's par for the course, right? That's it's just part of what we're doing. And occasionally, you know, when you come back to reality from it, you know, it's you commentary on it. Like, wow, I can really feel your knuckles on that one. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and so, you know, um, we hit a new mark, right? Like it, it's not full on yet, but it's tr the training is progressing, right? Like it, it's it's further than what it was the last time, and that's the sort of that's the sort of progress and goal. And we're talking about various things and various aspects, and some of it sexy time, some of it not sexy time, right? And so we we hit the end of that. And, you know, it clean up. He cleans me up as best he can. And, you know, I, I take the documentary photo, uh, photos of, you know, how far managed to get in and these sorts of things, right? Like, you know, just, just you know, for posterity. Dudes are visual. Dudes are visual. Um, and so, like, you know, we, f we finish up. And he's like, you know, you could, you can use the, you know, shower here if you want. Or you can just wait till you get home. I'm like, I'm, I'm fine, sir. Don't worry about it. Um, so, into his bedroom we go. Scrapbooking purposes, exactly. Into his bedroom we go. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm testing the bed. You know, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm doing the, the rock. Uh, hey, hey, boo boo. Um, I'm doing the rock back and forth. I'm doing the press on the table and these sorts of things. We're just trying to get a feel for this, this massage table, like, you know, fucking kneeling on it, that sort of thing. Um, going over police abolition, why be specific to me? Um, I mean, kind of, yeah, with her, like literally like we've done that sort of level. Um, so I get him on the table finally, right? Like he, he finishes up his, like, we clean up the, we clean up the, the plug and we clean up, you know, the, this and that. And like, I wipe down his counter and stuff like that. Right. And we, I get him on the fucking massage table. Right. And he's, I, I know he needs this, right? Like he work he does, he works on a computer. Like he's a, sequ a SQL programmer. Like he works, that's his task at his job is he works on SQL databases. Right. And he's had a stressful day. He's, he's had a stressful like few months, right? He moved, he set up a new house. He fucking works at a desk all day. He fucking had, you know, his, his car got into a fucking accident he's had to have that repaired. And his friend didn't show up when his friend was supposed to show up. Like, right. Like he, he's, I know he's got a stress load. Right. And I know he gets off on what he was just doing. Like mentally he gets off on it, but there's a difference. Right. So I got him on the table face down and he's, he's got like, he's got a cream and he's got an oil and he's like, I didn't know which one you'd prefer to work with. Yeah. I think of it a follow boo boo. Um, we're just doing DJ and story time right now. Right. We'll get into the po political theory and stuff a little later, but, um, pro programmer by day, Dom by night. Yeah, basically. Um, so I get him on the table and 
get the oil and start. I know where to start. It's all right here. It's all right here. I know where it is, right? It's all going to be right here. And so he's face down. So yeah, um, his right, his right side. I start there. I'm like, it's rock hard. It's fucking rock hard. It was, it was absolutely rock hard. I like started working at it and he laughed and he said, don't, don't expect that you can get it worked out in one session. I'm like, just, just let me do, do my thing, sir. Right. And I just start working it. And I, I'm, you know, I'm literally doing like, you know, I'm doing the trap run. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing up here. I'm doing up here. But I, you know, I get to here and I ask him, I'm like, are, do you mind if I get oil in your hair? And he said, no, I don't mind. But thank you for asking. I'm like, yeah, he, he, he upon our first meeting, he had told me that like he had asked me if I knew any gay masseuses here in town that didn't mind. He said, I just don't like getting a massage with like the towel. He said, when they're doing all that towel crap and covering up your junk and covering up your, your ass, he said, it just, I don't like that. He said, I had a, mas a masseuse out in San Diego who moved. He's, he, was, he said he was gay. It never, it was nothing untoward. He said, he just didn't care if I jumped on the table naked and we just left it at that, right? So I knew he hadn't had a massage in a while and I knew how he preferred to have his massage. So I already am like two, two check boxes here. Right. Um, so start working, start working, start working. And I get up to here and I get at the, just the Atlas, right? Like just the base of the skull. And I start, you know, cause you can get there with your thumbs face down. You can get there with your thumbs and you're working the up like that. And you just get your thumbs in there and you run them down all the way down the traps and you just hold that line all the way in and then you go from there right and he's he starts he starts going you know you don't you don't have to put this much effort into it he said you can just and i lean in and i whisper into his ear right this is this is um whether it's personal experience it's i've had i've had I've had hundreds of massages, professional top grade massages with her in my lifetime. I, I know exactly what to do. Um, and I know how I'd change them. Yeah, I can put my own spin on it. I lean in and I whisper into his right ear, sir, for once in your life, just shut the fuck up and let me do this. He picks his head up, grins, and goes, I'm going to let you get away with that one, and plops his head back down. I own him at this point. I know what I'm doing, right? Like, when you carry that tension there, right? When you carry that tension in that run and somebody has just released that like that and just dug in there. You're, you're, you're doing nothing. You're going nowhere. You're not going to complain about shit for shit. You're fucking putty in their hands. You're putty in their hands. I know exactly what I'm doing at this point, right? I've got him. And I just fucking work. And I work those shoulders and I work that neck and I work those shoulders. I work that neck and I work up to the temples. I work down to the jaw. I work all the way down to the TMJ. I fucking get up in there, right? I'm, I'm behind his ears here where he doesn't even know he has tension. That there you can actually carry tension right there. I'm in there and he's just, you know, at this point, like, right, this is, this is borderline. This is probably better than the last like hundred orgasms this man has had at this point, right? Like I'm, I'm working it you know and i've literally you know it's suspending and manipulating and then working down towards the scapulas the shoulders the delts and i'm suspending his arm in my arm at one point so i've literally just got him so i'm carrying the weight and i'm moving his arm as necessary to get under the scapula i'm doing the spinal run down to right down to the uh right down to the lower run of the uh of the spine into the waist right where your glutes connect 
and there's just a ton of fucking tension from sitting right there. And the older you are, the worse it's going to be. And it's just fucking, I'm just thumbs in on that, right? Like just working it. And he's just silent. He's just, he's gone. He's gone. He's essentially in what, for like a massage, is the equivalent of subspace, right? For like a dom-sub relationship, right? I have overloaded his, his central nervous system at this point. He is so relaxed. He is so gone with stimuli that like there's no, like forget it. This dude's fucking gone. Um, and... <laughs> and so like I'm, I'm just working him right I'm, I'm working him and I'm working around the table and I know I know what I'm doing right and I, I'm even doing the if you've had a massage you know how they continually touch you right if you walk around the table uh, if you've ever had a professional massage they never like completely separate from you right like if they move around the table they make sure they touch you Right. So they're, they're, they're continually touching. So, you know where they are. So there's never this opportunity for your brain to go into the inquisitive mode. Where are they? What's going on? Right. Like there's always a sensation of, you know, where they are. Don't worry about it. That sort of thing. So it maintains a constant level of relaxation. It maintains the constant kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic input from, uh, from your masseuse. Right. Like I'm doing all of this, right? Like I know how to do this. And I'm just going to town and I fucking work his ass. And since he's naked and I know we have that level, like I don't mind, like he's extraordinarily well bathed. I can smell the soap on him, right? Um, so it was switched and a proper show of devotion as suits this up. Yes, tech support, basically. Like I know like he's, he's, I can smell the soap on this dude. He's so extraordinarily well bathed at this point. Like, right, like, so I'm literally running, um, no, uh, but my primary, like my, my, um, old buddy cat up in here does, uh, does, um, Muay Thai. Um, and so like literally like right down through the, the, the ass crack down into like taint territory. Like I, I, whatever. Right. Even if he wasn't extraordinarily well, but I'd do it anyway. Um, and so like literally up the ass cheeks and all of it, right? Like down the leg run, down the back of the leg, down the fucking calves and down to that, that the back of the heel, which people don't even realize R massage the two sides of the back of your heel, right? Like just below your ankle, above the bottom of your heel, take your, take this and take your thumb and your index and just like rub back and forth on that and see if you don't feel some shit, right? Like just doing the full run. And I'm working around, and then it's, you know, right-hand side all the way down, left-hand side all the way down, primary down the middle, redo the back sort of thing, go back and redo the neck and shoulders, work that back down, do the run down from the left-hand side, and I hit the left-hand side, I'm like, you carry your weight on your left hand, uh, on your left, uh, uh, your left side, don't you? Uh, I said, uh, no, you carry your weight on your, uh, your, uh, your, yeah, your left side, right? He said, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I can feel it in your foot. So I'm doing like the bottom of the foot and the arch and I'm like, you have high arches like me. Let me guess. You have issues with your feet? And he's like, yeah, all the time. I said, yeah, let me get in there. And I fucking work that plantar fasciitis sort of stuff on his feet, right? I'm, I'm fucking working it. And just, I hit that point. I know. I'm like, flip. And he flip. He, he eventually manages to roll over. It's like that. You know, you're just, you know, it, he manages to flip and he fucking just, he just, he has that moment. I've been there, like I said, hundreds of times, right? It's just, right? The organs resettle inside you. Your breathing changes. It just, it's, it's, and the blood sort of, you know, everything. Um, so I, I, he, he opens his eyes and he looks at me and I'm grinning like a maniac, of course. And he's like, what? I said, no, I just know that feeling. He's like, what? I said, that right there, that thing you just had. I said, I know that feeling. It's great. And he's like, yeah, I'm like, okay. So I work again. I start from the top basically. And now I can cradle his head, right? Like now I can take the weight from his head and literally work underneath and then work over. So I work back down the shoulders again, these sorts of things. Um, boo boo. Why I gotta be a little bitch about like that, right? Like I'm in the middle of telling a story. Welcome, there you go. Fucking welcome foreign comrade. Now stop being a bitch and interrupting. 
Um, so I'm working the, uh, I'm working the fucking, you know, I'm literally got this, uh, his head suspended and I, I'm working da- back down over again. And, um, so I'm working his shoulders and I work rework and then I work down his chest and I work the pecs and, you know, I work down the hips and they sort of the sides and I work the rib cage, right? Like I'm literally working like the, uh, the interspatial ribs, these sort of things. Um, and then the work, the front, the hips, where the uh, where the actual um, ball and socket meet, which you know most people don't get like a good massage there because most masseuses won't actually touch that area of your body, but you know again, and I literally at this point I like go in and I just move his junk right, like I literally just I just lift up his his sack and his dick and fucking move it so I can get right down in there and work that area, right, and then just move it the other direction. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm like, and fucking flip, you know, fucking, and I'm cradling it, right? Like I'm literally like got his, his package in my hand so I can like, you know, just move it and, you know, get in there and then switch hands so I can move it the other direction and get in there and get an area that like quite literally, like very few people have ever even had a massage of, um, and then I work down the thighs and I rework the calves and I work the feet. And this time, since he's positioned that way, I can put his feet on my thigh, right? I can get up in there and put counter pressure against his foot and like get some tension in the calf and the thigh. And then I can work it that way. And so like I'm literally using every trick I have either ever learned or or notice that I would do if I if the roles were reversed. Like I wish this dude would do this to me, right? Like during a massage. I'm I'm using all of it. All of it. Like it's it's all on display, right? And so I'm I'm working all of these aspects of his body. <sighs> Look. boy can only resist so much temptation. Okay? A boy can only resist so much temptation. There is a good-looking dick on display. All right? I've managed to touch it. I've managed to look at it. I managed to, like, you know, I, I, I can only, I can only resist so much, right? Like, I mean, I am I but human? Am I but human? Right? Yeah, I, I start. Yeah, with her. I fucking... Right in my mouth. With the piercing, by the way. I've never sucked a pierced dick before. Um, and so I start going to town. And the first thing he says is... I'm so relaxed, I don't think I'll be able to get hard even. I don't even respond. Just keep going. Just keep going. All right? Just keep going. That's that's it. I went for a while. I don't know how long. Um uh no caboose, you you really did. You really did. Um we're we're coming towards the you're in the the home stretch. I'm going to town and he's not. He's he's not getting hard at all. Um which is fine. Which is fine. I, I don't care. He's moaning. He's moaning. Like, he's he's moaning and groaning at this point. Like, he he's, he's like, you know, he's having a very good experience from this one way or the other. So I keep going and I keep going. And I, I get to the, 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 the point in the sense that, like, this isn't going to, this isn't going to climax. This isn't going to, like, it, but that's okay. Right? That's not the goal. The goal is pleasure and I delivered on the pleasure right so I stopped eventually um and I just sort of you know grazed up his body and wiped some of the slobber off of his uh off of his crotch at that point um and you know he he sort of he came to this um you know, he came to, as it were, and looks at me and he says, 
you're the first person who's ever sucked my dick with that piercing in it, and it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't hurt when doing it. And he proceeds to tell me the traumatic story of him getting his dick pierced and how ever since then, every time he's ever had anybody attempt to play with his dick with the piercing in, it has caused him not pleasure but discomfort. And so he just takes it out when he's going to fuck or get a blowjob or even masturbate. He says that is literally the first time anybody has ever played with my dick and that piercing hasn't bothered me when oh when they did it i gave him a two-hour massage y'all a professional grade top shelf two-hour massage i can tell you the going rate on something like that by the way um topped off by a bj the likes of which he has never had Look, I can say this with as little ego as possible, but it's going to sound egotistical. So I'm just going to say it. I'm very good at what I do. Right? There are some things that I do. I'm good at them. Right? I believe I can do anything. I think any human being should be able to like try their hand at anything. But the things that I do... I'm very good at. All right. He manages to peel himself off of the table. And he pats me on the ass. And with the most dopey grin on his face. He says. I can't tell you what he called. He calls me the F word. Right. He, which he doesn't, there's no derogatory nature to it. It's just a diminutive term for him, right? He calls me the F slur. It's fine. It doesn't bother me in the least. In fact, it kind of works for me, right? He pats me on the ass and says the term that we're not supposed to say because it's all TOS shit now, right? And he goes, you know what? You're good. I think I might keep you around. Yeah, I know you will. I know you will. You know, just. <clears throat> there's not many that he deals with, right? I'm under no illusions or delusions, right? We are not monogamous. He's free and I'm free to see anyone for any reason, right? Like that's, I, I understand that. I understand that there could possibly be somebody else with his hand in him or on him at some given time. Very few will bring the skill set that I have. And the ones that have that skill set, the ones that can conform to his expectations so fluidly, we're now in infinitesimally small percentages territory. So, you know, we go back down. We, he, he throws on some pajama bottoms for, from his alma mater, of course. Throws on a shirt. We go downstairs. He, we talk a little bit, just a couple more minutes. And he tells me I can get dressed at that point. I throw my clothes on. I give him a hug. And I look at him and say, sleep well. Oh, yeah, I will. He had the best sleep he's had in a very long time, apparently. He had a memorable experience the likes of which no sub has ever given him. No sub has ever performed from the training point of view. The No one has ever given him a massage like that. And no one has ever managed to blow him like that. 
I walked out of there giving him a singular experience. <laughs> I just I just killed the end of the uh, recording. So there you go. That's the first zippy. That'll be the first one in the playlist. If you want to go back and figure them out, but um, curiouser, I, I don't curiouser. I have never paid for for any sexual encounter in my life. I'm gonna say this is, you know what? I'm just gonna say it. I'm gorgeous and I'm amazing in bed. I don't pay. <laughs> <laughs> there's no other way to fucking it. I'm just gonna sound like an egotistical freak no matter what how I say that so I'm just gonna fucking own it and say it no no in no way shape or form would I ever need to um yeah ah uh. cheers Um, uh, yeah, fair enough, Rev. I, uh, yeah. And even if I wanted to be serviced, right? Like if you just wanted to, I can, that's not difficult. Uh, but it sounds like a great time. And now I want a massage. Yes. Um, everybody go get a massage. Um, well, caboose, there's, there's the clip link. We we specifically recorded the DGen story time. Um. Yeah, Zippy. I you know like I understand that like, but I could you know yeah. Yeah, mm, for two. I agree. I agree. Right? Like, who wants to fucking, um. Right. Uh, curious or pay somebody just pay somebody that way you know it's go to a professional sports massage therapist and pay them that way like you know like it's just it's just transactional um <laughs> Cassidy rough um fair enough Zippy fair enough there is actually a, a physiological response to that watching massage like there, there is a, a biochemical reaction that will occur. You, you will get a, a certain like dopamine flush, I think, out of it. But yeah, yeah. Um, let's just say that if I dropped off the face of the earth to like tomorrow, um, he's going to his grave remembering that night. Right? Like, he's he's going to his grave remembering that night. For sure. Exactly, Zippy. Uh, I get you on that one. So, yeah. That was my Saturday night. Sunday was supposed to be something different, but like I said, it got rescheduled to Wednesday night after stream. Um. So, Thursday... Uh, well, Wednesday, you will have another DGen story time because I see him on Tuesday nights. Um, and then Wednesday, uh, sorry, then Thursday. Um, so Wednesday, you will have a story. And then Thursday, you will have a story. So there you go. Thursday's story is going to be more interesting than Wednesday's story. I'll tell you that right now. Um, the the Tuesday with, um, with, sir, with my dom. Um, is going to be pretty much par for the course. It's going to be another training session. It's just going to be, you know, baseline fisting training, that sort of thing. Um, I don't see it being very much of a storytelling incident. Um, but we will, we'll talk about it. Um, but what's happening Wednesday night is going to be a story for sure. Um, so Thursdays, uh, Thursday is a late night show. Uh, but the DJ and story time for Thursday is going to be worth telling for sure. So 
tech support. So that's why we read it out in a hurry. Excellent. Um, did I never turn the raid one back on? Um, that reminds me. That feels like I didn't because if you guys raided in and I didn't see that. Oh, fucking A. Don't do that. No, it's enabled. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> baseline fisting. Basically any uh, any uh, any other Tuesday. Marcus, yeah, basically. <laughs> like, it's scheduled. Like, literally, we have a schedule, right? Like, I, I, I have, I have, I have fisting sessions with a dom scheduled. So, um, yeah. DJ on story time, everyone. Glad you enjoyed it. I know a lot of you live vicariously through those stories. So, uh, let's see. All right. Yeah, I, you know, Zippy, it's also, that is an aspect of it. Yeah, that's an aspect. Vicariously, that was an excellent ad for massage services. What's the price? Um, the going rate around these parts for a massage of that, of that caliber for two hours, you're looking at somewhere in the, $250 range, Aka. That's that's depending on who if you get an independent, you're looking at a probably $250. If you go to a spa, you're probably gonna pay $350, $400. Yeah. And and there's gonna be the sheet and it's gonna be very less intimate and it's not gonna, you know, yeah. Oh, and none of them will have the happy ending. Um so yeah, you're you're in the 250 to 400 range for like a two hours sports grade massage for that sort of that sort of thing. Yeah. Um. I'll keep this in mind if I ever start making back. Trust me, they're amazing. Oh, a good massage is amazing. I used to trade massages with my dear friend every few weeks, but she got so uh, serious girlfriend, so we don't anymore. Both of us are really good, though. Nice, some sense. Yeah, it's, it's dude, there's nothing quite like it. Uh, I couldn't tell you what the happy ending would cost you, Crix. I, I don't know. Like I said, I've never paid for sex. And it's nothing against it, but it's I've never paid for sex. So... I, I have no idea what the happy ending around here costs. I can tell you what going to like a, a cat house costs, but I, I can't I can't tell you like what a massage uh, masseuse's happy ending costs. Um, oh, I want to do some of this reading. What? How long is this first section? Well, that first section isn't bad. Caboose. Yeah, that's rough. Um, oh, hey now. Ah, <laughs> uh, there. That's not terrible. 2.2 isn't bad. Let's look at 2.3. 2.3 is kind of long. What's 2.4? 2 2.5. 2 2.6. Oh, 2.6 is long. 2.7, not bad. 2.8. Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, how old do you think I am, MGIS, uh, MGIS Ray? How old do you think I am? I suppose is the question. How old do you want me to be? Um, if you want a standard happy ending in a Wall Street in New York, it's about two to three grand. Swede with the fucking inside finance knowledge. Like 64. Cool. All right, then I'm 64. <laughs> It, the age thing doesn't like yeah I'm 64 man oh. did, you, 
Do you think this bothers me? Really? Homie. Try harder, man. Try harder. Anyway. Yeah, respect your elders. Um, all right, let me get stuff set up for reading. Um, all right, so follows, disable it. Subscriptions, disable it. And raids, disabled. And hosts, disabled. All right, and then let's kill the alert system entirely, just in case. Rev. Um, all right. We're going to do this. I look, I know it's dry. Um, but I'm, I'm determined at this point to make my way through this goddamn document and I didn't get to do any more reading on Friday. So we're going to do it. Oh, <sighs> Amongst us hasn't been a teenage boy. All right, I'm gonna move this over here. Oh. Um, theory time. Fucking theory time. Oop, didn't mean to double click. Oh. Um, are we back in politics? No, we're not. All right. All right, same um, same deal applies. Um, while I'm reading, we can talk about the sections. Like you guys can talk about, uh, like do not do not refrain from chatting and stuff like that. By all means, use the chat and talk about the stuff as I go along. But just know that I won't be referencing chat as I do the section. And also, um, favor ask um, if somebody comes in and they start talking at me or like demanding attention in some way, shape, or form. Just inform them tell them just wait a second and when i'm done with the section i'll take a break you know i'll end the the recording and um we can we can sort of address the crazy in that section given that we're talking about and caps and we may whatever's happened in chat in the meantime right i just somebody keep an eye on chat and fucking make it not you know that sort of thing um but you know again like don't you don't need to feel like you need to refrain from chat or anything like that while i'm reading I know a lot of you just listen when I do this, so don't feel like you have to either. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I'm reading from the Anarchist FAQ document. Here's the link in chat um, for anybody who fucking asks what it is. Um, about why... Um, eh, thank you for twos. Um, why ANCAPs aren't actually anarchists. Right. Like that's that's what this document is entirely about. And it's going into the nature of like libertarian right wing, a uh, right wing libertarian philosophy and ideology, Rothbard, Mises, Hoppe, fucking th these sorts of this crew. Um, ah, thank you, Gemma. Um, and why it's absolute batshit insane and how it is just the most odious of like it's just feudalism. It's just feudalism. But yeah, it's it's anti-empirical, it's anti-scientific method, it's anti-human, it's completely illogical. Um, and so yeah, I'm just going through this document because most of us are sane human beings and we understand the the ramifications and implications of the sort of like Ancapistan, like how it would end up, right? You end up owning people and you end up with privatized militaries and you end up with like private police Pinkerton style roaming the streets. Right. Like that's 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 how it ends up with and But contracts and insurance companies will protect you. Right. For, for reasons somehow. Um, and so it's, you know, most of us don't need to go into this depth to understand these things. But ANCAPs are like ANCAP brain. Right. Like they they absolutely do not understand the ramifications of their ideology, apparently. That or they don't want to. Or, in the instance of Rothbard, they're just literally arguing in bad faith. All right, Rothbard argued in bad faith. We know that. So, um, 
<laughs> You're welcome, Marcus. Um, so, yeah. All right. I'm going to drink. Let's do this. Like I said, we'll break after each, sec- each section. Um, <clears throat> oh, let me see framing here. Looking. All right. Chapter 2, Section 1. What are the implications of defining liberty in terms of property rights? The change from defending liberty to defending property rights has important implications. For one thing, it allows right libertarians to imply that private property is similar to a fact of nature, and so to conclude that the restrictions on freedom produced by it can then be ignored— This can be seen in Robert Nozick's argument that decisions are voluntary if the limitations on one's actions are not caused by human action, which infringe the rights of others. Thus, in a pure capitalist society, the restrictions on freedom caused by wage slavery are not really restrictions because the worker voluntarily uh, voluntarily consents to the contract. The circumstances that drive a worker to make the contract are irrelevant because they're created by people exercising their rights and not violating others, other people's ones. See the section on voluntary exchange in Anarchy, State, and Utopia, uh, and Utopia pages 262 to 265, for reference on this. This means that within a society, whether a person's actions are voluntary depends on what limits his alternatives. In fact, in fa- uh, if facts of nature do so, the actions are voluntary. I may voluntarily walk to some place I would prefer to fly to unaided. Similarly, the results of voluntary actions and the transference of property can be considered alongside the facts of nature. They are, after all, the resultants of natural rights. This means that the circumstances created by the existence and use of property can be considered, in essence, as a natural fact, and so the actions we take in response to these circumstances are therefore voluntary and we are free. Nozick presents the example on page 263 of someone who marries the only available person. All of the more attractive people having already chosen others is a case of an action that is voluntary despite removal of all but the least attractive alternative through the legitimate actions of others. Needless to say, the example can be and is extended to workers on the labor market, although, of course, you do not starve to death if you don't decide to get married. However, such an argument fails to notice that property is different from, oh, I don't know, let's say gravity or biology. Of course, not being able to fly does not restrict freedom. Neither does not being able to jump 10 feet into the air. But unlike gravity, for example, private property has to be protected by laws and the police. No one stops you from flying, but laws and police force must exist to ensure that capitalist property and the owner's authority over it is respected. The claim, therefore, that private property in general, and capitalism in particular, can be considered as facts of nature, like gravity, ignores an important fact. Namely, that the people involved in an economy must accept the rules of its operation. Rules that, for example, allow contracts to be enforced, forbid using another's property without their consent, theft, trespass, copyright infringement, etc. Prohibit conspiracy, unlawful assembly, rioting, and so on. And create monopolies through regulation, licensing, charters, patents. This means that capitalism has to include the mechanisms for deterring property crimes as well as mechanisms for compensation and punishment should such crimes be committed. In other words, capitalism is in fact far more, volun- uh, far more than voluntary bilateral exchange because it must include the policing, arbitration, arbitration, and legislating mechanisms required to ensure its operation. Hence, like the state, the capitalist market is a social institution, and the distribution of goods that results from its operation are therefore the distribution sanctioned by the capitalist society. As Benjamin Franklin even pointed out, private property is a creation of society and is subject to the calls of that society. 
thus. To claim what Sir Isaiah Berlin, the main modern source of the concepts of negative and positive freedom, although we must add that Berlin was not a right libertarian, that if my property were a, a kind of disease which prevented me from buying bread as lameness prevents me from running, this inability would not naturally be described as a lack of freedom. Totally misses the point. Two Concepts of Freedom in Four Essays on Liberty, page 123. If you are disabled, police officers don't come around to stop you running. They don't have to. However, they are required to protect the property against the dispossessed and those who reject those capitalist property rights. This means that by using such concepts as negative liberty and ignoring the social nature of private property, right libertarians are trying to turn the discussion away from liberty towards biology and other facts of nature. And conveniently, by placing property rights alongside the likes of gravity and other natural laws, they also succeed in reducing debate even about rights. Of course, Coercion and restriction of liberty can be resi uh, resisted, unlike natural forces like gravity. So if, as Berlin argues, negative freedom means that you lack political freedom only if you are prevented from attaining, it, uh, attaining a goal by human beings, then capitalism is indeed based on such a lack, since property rights need to be enforced by human beings. I am prevented by others from doing what I could otherwise do. After all, as Proudhon long ago noted, the market is man-made, hence any constraint it imposes is the coercion of man by man, and so economic laws are not as inevitable as natural ones. You can see more on this uh, from Alan Ritter's uh, analysis of Proudhon through the political thought of Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, page 122. Or, to put it slightly differently, capitalism requires coercion in order to work, and hence is not similar to a fact of nature, regardless of Nozick's claims, i.e. property rights have to be defined and enforced by human beings, although the nature of the labor market resulting from capitalist uh, property definitions is such that direct coercion is usually not needed. This implication is actually recognized by right libertarians because they argue that the rights framework of a society should be set up in one way rather than another. In other words, they recognize that society is not independent of human interaction and so can be changed. Perhaps, as seems the case, the so-called anarcho-capitalist or the right libertarian will claim that, it's, that it is only deliberate acts which violate your libertarian-defined rights by other human beings that cause unfreedom. We define freedom as the absence of invasion by another man of a, uh, of, an, uh, of a man's property or person, Rothbard in The Ethics of Liberty, page 41. And so if no one deliberately coerces you, then you're free. In this way, the workings of the capitalist market can be placed alongside the facts of nature then and ignored as a source of unfreedom. However, a moment's thought shows that this is not the case. Both deliberate and non-deliberate acts can leave individuals lacking freedom. Let us assume, in an example paraphrase from Alan Hayworth's uh, excellent book, Anti-Libertarianism, page 49, that someone kidnaps you and places you down a deep, naturally formed pit, miles from anywhere, which is impossible to climb up. No one would deny that you are unfree. Let us further assume that another person walks by and accidentally falls into the pit with you. According to right libertarianism, while you are unfree, subject to deliberate coercion, your fellow pit dweller is perfectly free, for they have the subject. They uh, they are subject to the facts of nature and not human action, deliberate or otherwise. Or perhaps they voluntarily chose to stay in the pit. After all, it is only the facts of nature limiting their actions. Obviously, both of you are in exactly the same position, have exactly the same choices, and so are equally unfree. Thus, a definition of liberty that maintains that only deliberate acts of others, for example, coercion, reduces freedom, misses the point entirely. So why is this example important? Well, let's consider Murray Rothbard's analysis of the situation after the abolition of serfdom in Russia and slavery in America. 
The bodies of the oppressed were freed, but the property which they had worked and eminently deserved to own remained in the hands of their former oppressors. With economic power thus remaining in their hands, the former lords soon found themselves virtual masters, once more of what they were now, what were now free tenants or farm laborers. The serfs and slaves had tasted freedom, but had been cruelly derived of its fruits. Ethics of Liberty, page 74. However, Contrast this with Rothbard's claims that if market forces, so-called voluntary exchanges, result in the creation of free tenants or laborers, then these laborers and tenants are free. You can see this on, uh, for example, in The Ethics of Liberty by Rothbard, pages 221 to 222, on why economic power within capitalism does not exist. But the laborers dispossessed by market forces are in exactly the same situation as the former serfs and slaves. Rothbard sees the obvious economic power in the latter case, but denies it in the former. But the conditions of the people in question are identical, and it is these conditions that horrify the likes of actual anarchists. It's, it's only his ideology that stops Rothbard drawing the obvious conclusion. Identical conditions produce identical social relationships, and so if the formerly free ex-serfs are subject to economic power and masters, then so are the formerly free laborers within capitalism. Both sets of workers may be formerly free, but their circumstances are such that they are free to consent to sell their freedom to others, i.e. economic power produces relationships of domination and unfreedom between formerly free individuals. Thus, Rothbard's definition of liberty in terms of rights fails to provide us with a realistic and viable understanding of freedom. Someone can be a virtual slave while still having their rights non-violated. Conversely, someone can have their property rights violated and still be free. For example, a child who enters your backyard without your permission to get their ball hardly violates your liberty. Indeed, you would never know that they had even entered your property unless you happened to see them do it. So, the idea that freedom means non-aggression against a person and their legitimate material property justifies extension, extensive non-freedom for the working class. The non-violation of property rights does not imply freedom, as Rothbard's discussion of the former slaves shows. Anyone who, along with Rothbard, defines freedom as the absence of invasion by another person of any person's person or property is, a deeply, is in a deeply inequality society, is supporting and justifying capitalist and landlord domination. As anarchists have long realized, in an unequal society, a contractarian starting point implies absolutist conclusion. Why is this? Simply because freedom is the result of a social interaction, not the product of some isolated abstract individual. Rothbard uses the model of Robinson Crusoe to, to construct his ideology, literally. But as Bakunin argued, the freedom of the individual is a function of men in society, a, ne uh, a necessary consequence of the collective development of mankind. He then goes on to argue that Man in isolation can have no awareness of his liberty. Liberty is therefore a feature not of isolation, but of interaction. Not of exclusion, but rather of connection. Right libertarians, by building their definition of freedom from the isolated person, ended up by, uh, end up by supporting restrictions of liberty due to a neglect of an adequate recognition of the actual interdependence of human beings, of the fact that what each person does is affected and affects others. People become aware of their humanity and their liberty in society, not outside of it. It's, it is the very social relationships we take part in which determine how free we are, and any definition of freedom which builds upon an individual without social ties is doomed to create relations of domination, not freedom, between individuals at least, as Rothbard's theory does. To put it another way, voluntary association is a necessary but not sufficient condition for freedom, which is why anarchists have always stressed the importance of equality. So... While facts of nature can restrict your, your options and freedom, it's the circumstances within which they act and the options they limit that are important. A person trapped at the bottom of a pit is unfree as the options available are so few. 
The disabled person is free because their available options are extensive. In the same manner, the facts of society can and do restrict freedom because they are the products of human action and are defined and protected by human institutions. It's the circumstances within which each individual make their decisions and the social relationships um, these decisions produce that are important. The worker driven by poverty to accept a slave contract in a sweatshop is unfree because the circumstances they face have limited their options and the relations they accept are based upon hierarchy. The person who decides to join an anarchist commune is free because the commune is non-hierarchical and they have the option of joining another commune, working alone, and so forth. All in all, the right libertarian concept of freedom is to say the very least, lacking. For an ideology that takes the name libertarianism, it seems happy to ignore actual liberty and instead concentrate on an abstract form of liberty which ignores so many sources of unfreedom as to narrow the concept until it becomes little more than a justification for authoritarianism. This can be seen from the right libertarian attitudes about private property and its effects on liberty. Section, section one of chapter two down. Um, Ratatosk, thank you for the follow. Um, let's see who fucking came in. Eskazon, uh, what's up? Um, hello. And hello to anybody else I, I missed. Um, Right, libertarians make Lenin look concerned with liberty. Yes, yes, actually. Yeah. Um, like I said, they're batshit insane, man. They're batshit insane. And, like, this is the foundational ideology. This is the foundational philosophy of this shit. Um, You're not, a, you're not, dude, yeah, you're, you're carrying the title anarchist and you would send people to re-education camps for practicing astrology. You're not, you're not, an, you're not, an, I mean, no, <laughs> just no. Um, okay. Um, Eskazon, link in chat. It's essentially the anarchist FAQ document on why ANCAPs are not anarchists and never will be. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a thorn in my side. We do, we talk about this from time to time. Um, And so I'm just doing a comprehensive reading of the document. It's not going to get done today. It's a very long document. There's many, many reasons why so-called ANCAPs will never be anarchists, right? And so, like, if you want to peel away the layers of their bullshit, there's many layers to this shit onion. But we're doing it. So... Yeah, basically, Kaiser. Yeah, you're either you're being conned, you're either a dumb fuck being conned, or you're conning some dumb fucks, right? Um, yeah, yeah. There's ways to do it. Yeah, and if you want to like literally uh, elucidate those those ways, yeah. Um, fucking talk to Irish Swede. But yeah. Capitalism is about the privatization of the means of production and the, the commons, right? It's, it's, it's literally about the privatization of that. It has nothing to do with the exchange of, like, capitalism isn't about the exchange of goods or services, right? It's not about the marketplace. It's about the privatization of the commons and the privatization of the means of production, right? You can have market socialism. You can have non-market socialism. But you can have market versions of these sorts of things where... Um, you you ex you have mechanisms to exchange goods and services. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, oh. 
All right. Let's see how long section two is. Know, it's not too terrible. Oh. <clears throat> All right. Section two. Um. Oh no, the Austrian school. No. Uh, Schumpeter is the only sane Austrian. This is this is per a qualified economist and finance expert. I'm quoting at this point. Schumpeter is the only sane Austrian. The entirety of the Austrian school of economics are batshit insane. They're batshit insane, right? Like they don't even they reject empiricism. They reject the scientific method. No. Yeah, don't bring that. You miss me with the Austrian school shit. It's, it's fucking weird as shit, man. Fucking praxeology. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'll fucking break up the, the, uh, the segments. Fucking put a hat on, then put it on backwards, and then fucking, yeah, let's, let's do a little of that. I was working last week and I caught you talking to Sweet about praxeology. I absolutely loved it, but I got to watch the VOD. Yeah, it's, dude, that's, did the prax, it's fucking Rothbard, praxeology. Yeah. No, no, the Austrians are fucking batshit insane market. Like, they're, they're legitimately, like, the Austrian school of economics rejects empiricism. Yep. Fucking Mises. Fucking Mises. Uh, Mises, Hoppe, fucking Rothbard, the fucking lot of them. Yeah. They're all fucking derived. They're just all derivative bullshit. To be fair, rejection of science is necessary for the models to work. Exactly, sourcing. <laughs> exactly. It's the only fucking way you'll make that shit make sense is if you just reject all of reality. Ugh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Zippy. <laughs> uh. I, okay. Yeah. All right. Nuts. Um. All right. Here we go. Here we go with the second section, y'all. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how how long I can go. How long y'all can go? I want to get these. I'd love to get all fucking eight sections of uh, uh, of chapter two done tonight, but I don't think we're gonna get it. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the old college try, right? Um, we're gonna give it the old college try. Chapter 2, Section 2. How does private property affect freedom? The right libertarian does not address or even acknowledge that the absolute right of private property may lead to extensive control by property owners over those who use but do not own property, such as workers and tenants. Thus, a free market capitalist system leads to a very selective and class-based protection of rights and freedoms. For example... Under capitalism, the freedom of employers inevitably conflicts with the freedom of employees. When stockholders or their managers exercise their freedom of enterprise to decide how their company will operate, they violate their employees' right to decide how their laboring capacities will be utilized. In other words, under capitalism, the property rights of employers will conflict with and restrict the human rights of employees to manage themselves. Capitalism allows the right of self-management only to the few, not to all. Or alternatively, capitalism does not recognize certain rights as universal, which anarchism would. This can be seen from Austrian economist W. Duncan Rieke's defense of wage labor. While referring to intrafirm labor markets as hierarchies, Rieke, in his best ex-cathedra tone, states that 
There's nothing authoritarian, dictatorial, or exploitative in the relationship. Employees order employers to pay them amounts specified in the hiring contract, just as much as employers order employees to abide by the terms of the contract. Markets Entrepreneurs in Liberty, page 136, 137, if you want the citation. Given that the terms of contract involve the worker agreeing to obey the employer's orders and that they will be fired if they do not, it's pretty clear that the ordering that goes on in the intra-firm labor market is decidedly one way. Bosses have the power. Workers are paid to obey. And this then at least begs the question... If the employment contract creates a free worker, why must they abandon their liberty during work hours? Ricky actually recognizes that this lack of freedom in a roundabout way, he, he, uh, when he notes that, quote, employees in a firm at any level in the hierarchy can exercise an entrepreneurial role. The area within which that role can be carried out increases the more authority the employee has. See previous citation, page 142. Which means workers are subject to control from above, which restricts the activities they are allowed to do, and so they are not free to act make decisions, participate in the plans of the organization, create the future, and so forth within those working hours. And it is strange that while recognizing the firm as a hierarchy, Riki tries to deny that it's authoritarian or dictatorial, as if you could have a hierarchy without authoritarian structures or an unelected person in authority who isn't a dictator. His confusion is shared by Austrian guru Ludwig von Mises, Mises, actually, I believe is the correct pronunciation on that, sorry, who asserts that the entrepreneur and capitalist are not re- irresponsible autocrats because they are unconditionally subject to the sovereignty of the consumer, while on the very next page, admitting that there is managerial hierarchy which contains the ab- average subordinate employee. See Human Action, page 809 and 800, page 810 for this citation. It does not enter his mind that the capitalist may be subject to some consumer control while being an autocrat to their su- su- uh, subordinated employees. Again, we find that the right libertarian acknowledging that the capitalist managerial structure is a hierarchy and workers are subordinated while denying it is autocratic to the workers. Thus, we have free workers within a relationship distinctly lacking freedom, in the sense of self-government at least. Seems to be a strange paradox. Indeed, if your personal life were as closely monitored and regulated as the work life of millions and billions of people across the world— you would rightly consider it oppressive. Perhaps Riki, like most right libertarians, will maintain that worker voluntary agree uh, that workers voluntarily agree or consent to be subject to the boss's dictatorship. He writes that quote each will only enter into the contractual agreement known as a firm if each believes that they will be better off thereby. The firm is simply another example of mutually beneficial exchange. See previous citation, page 137. However, this does not stop the relationship being authoritarian or dictatorial and so exploitative as it is highly unlikely that those at the top will not abuse their power. And as we argue further in the next section, in a capitalist society, workers have the option of finding a job or facing abject poverty and or starvation and or homelessness and or disease and death due to a capitalist for-profit healthcare system. Little wonder, then, that people voluntarily sell their labor and consent to these authoritarian structures. They have little option to do otherwise. So within the labor markets, workers can and do seek out the best working conditions possible, but that does not mean that the final contract agreed is freely accepted and not due to the force of circumstances, that both parties have equal bargaining power when drawing up the contract or that the freedom of both parties is ensured. Which means to argue, as many right libertarians do, that freedom cannot be restricted by wage labor because people enter into relationships they consider will lead to improvements over their initial situation totally misses the point. 
As the initial situation is not considered relevant, their argument fails. After all, agreeing to work in a sweatshop 14 hours a day is an improvement over starving to death, but it doesn't. It does not mean that those who uh, so agree are free when working there or actually want to be there. They are not, and it's the circumstances created and enforced by the law that have ensured that they consent to such a, reg- uh, a regimen. Given the chance, they would desire to change that regime, but cannot, as this would violate their boss's property rights and they would be repressed for trying. So the right-wing libertarian right is interested only in a narrow concept of freedom rather than in freedom or liberty as such. This can be seen in an argument of Ayn Rand, a so-called leading ideologue of libertarian capitalism or objectivism, That freedom in a political context means freedom from government coercion. It does not mean freedom from the landlord or freedom from the employer or freedom from the laws of nature which do not provide men with automatic prosperity. It means freedom from the coercive power of the state and nothing else. Capitalism, the unknown ideal, page 192. By arguing in this way, right libertarians ignore the vast number of authoritarian social relationships that exist in capitalist society and, as Rand does, imply that these social relationships are like the laws of nature. However, if one looks at the world without prejudice but with an eye to maximizing freedom, the major coercive institution is seen not to, uh, to be not the state but capitalist social relationships at present. The right libertarian, then, far from being a defender of freedom, is in fact a keen defender of certain forms of authority and domination. As Kropotkin noted, quote, The modern individualism initiated by Herbert Spencer is like the critical theory of Proudhon, a powerful indictment against the dangers and wrongs of government, but its practical solution of the social problem is miserable, so miserable as to lead us to inquire if the talk of no force be merely an excuse for supporting landlord and capitalist domination. Act for yourselves, page 98. To defend the freedom of property owners is to defend authority and privilege. In other words, statism. So, in considering the concept of liberty as freedom from, it's clear that by defending private property as opposed to possession, the so-called anarcho-capitalist is defending the power and authority of property owners to govern those who use their property. And also, we must note, defending all the petty tyrannies that make the work lives of so many people frustrating, stressful, and unrewarding. However, Anarchism, by definition, is in favor of organizations and social relationships which are non-hierarchical, heterarchical, and non-authoritarian. Otherwise, some people are more free than others. Failing to attack these hierarchies leads to massive contradiction. For example, since a British army is a volunteer one, it's an anarchist organization. What? In other words, full capitalist property rights do not protect freedom. In fact, they actively deny it. But this lack of freedom is only inevitable if we accept capitalist private property rights. If we reject them, we can try and create a world based on freedom in all aspects of life rather than just a few. Section two down. Um, S. Kazan, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the sub. Um, Oh, thank you for the sub, man. I do know that open. I I do actually know that trivia. Um, the the phrase "survival of the fittest" was not contained within any of Darwin's writings. It was coined by an economist. Yeah. Uh, is there anything I need to look at? Uh, yeah, fucking Hayek as well. Yeah, I forgot to, I forgot to mention fuck Hayek too. Uh, yeah, von Mises, Hayek, Rothbard, Hoppe. Uh, hey Puka. Well, I mean, we had a decent DGen story time. We only had one fucking butthurt person try and interrupt it. Um, and then, uh, we've gotten two sections of reading down, um, so far. And I'm still, I'm just... 
I'm just charging ahead. We're just doing more more of it. Um, how are you, Puka? You doing well? Uh, um, what's the next section? <laughs> Hayek <laughs> needs a softwood butt plug. <laughs> uh, uh, Puka, we recorded it uh, as its own separate clip, and it'll all there will be a playlist available. Um, we're gonna start. We're gonna start doing that. Oh, uncross that leg. Uncross that leg. Um, I could probably get you a clip right out of the gate, but. Um, make echoes. Sorry for yawning, y'all. Um, go to my page. There we go. I think that's the one I want. Clip management. Is this Dijon? Chapter 2, Section 2. Nope. Oh, no. Okay. No, it would be this one. Um. All right. I'll, uh, I'll post the fucking thing later. Because that's not even, they haven't even processed the videos out of sync. Uh, they haven't processed it correctly yet. Um, yeah, that's special. Um, fucking. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, no offense, but we deal with like hard political science and actual theory around these parts. <sighs> using it, using a, hey, mister, using a quote about from a movie that has probably no concept whatsoever of both fascism and anarchism. Um, conflating the two, you know. Definitely an interesting um, take, shall we say. Um, <laughs> uh, I just saw the meme you posted, Caboose. All right, what's, what's section three? Section three is longer. Hey, judges. Oh, God, sorry for yawning again, y'all. I know it triggers some people. Um, all right. I'm just, w I'm just holding off because like, um, like, I don't know if I'm going to need class. <laughs> oh, fucking love you, man. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to need to intervene here in a second or not or what. Um, but Uh, kill shred nar. Thanks for the follow. Uh, alerts are turned off right now because we're getting ready to do, well, we've been doing recordings and I'm going to continue doing recordings. So the, the alerts are turned off. Um, but I saw it pop. Thanks for the follow, man. Um, all right. Well, whether good luck, there's one in chat you may need to keep an eye on. I don't know. Okay, cool. 
All right, there's like three of you in there. Cool. All right, then I'm getting back to it. Chapter 2, Section 3. Can so-called anarcho-capitalist theory justify the state? Ironically enough, so-called anarcho-capitalist ideology actually allows the state to be justified along with capitalist hierarchy. This is because the reason why capitalist authority is acceptable to these so-called anarcho-capitalists is because it's voluntary. No one forces the worker to join or remain within a specific company. Force of circumstances are irrelevant from this viewpoint. Thus, capitalist domination is not really domination at all. But the state can be said of all democratic states as well. But the same can be said of all democratic states as well. Few such states bar exit for its citizens. They're free to leave at any time with provisos. Looking at you, America. And join any other state that will have them. Exactly as employees can with companies. Of course, there are differences between the two kinds of authority. Anarchists do not deny that, but the similarities are all too clear. The so-called anarcho-capitalists would argue that changing jobs is easier than changing states, and sometimes this is correct, but not always. Yes, changing states does require the moving of home and possessions over great distances, but so can changing jobs. Indeed, if a worker has to move halfway across a country or even the world to get a job, these so-called anarcho-capitalists would celebrate this as an example of the benefits of a flexible labor market. Yes, states often conscript citizens and send them into dangerous situations, but bosses often force their employees to accept dangerous working environments on pain of firing. Yes, many states do restrict freedom of association and speech, but so do bosses. I mean, yes, states tax their citizens, but landlords and companies only let others use their property if they get money in return. Indeed, if the employees or tenant does not provide the employee or landlord with enough profit, they will be quickly shown the door. Of course, employees can start their own companies, but citizens can start their own state if they convince an existing state, the owner of a set of resources, to sell or give land to them. Setting up a company also requires existing owners to sell and give resources to those who need them. Of course, in a democratic state, citizens can influence the nature of laws and the orders that they obey. In a capitalist country, this is not so much the case. This means that logically, these so-called anarcho-capitalisms, uh, ca so this means that logically, so-called anarcho-capitalism must consider a series of freely exitable states as anarchist and not a source of domination. If consent, not leaving, is what's required to make capitalist domination not domination, then the same can be said of statist domination. Stephen L. Newman makes this point. The emphasis that right-wing libertarians place on the opposition of liberty and political power tends to obscure the role of authority in their worldview. The authority exercised in private relationships, however, in the relationship between employer and employee, for instance, meets no objection. This reveals a curious insensitivity to the use of private authority as a means of a social control. Comparing public and private authority, we might as well ask of the right-wing libertarians, when the price of exercising one's freedom is terribly high, what practical difference is there between the commands of the state and those issued by one's employer. Though admittedly the circumstances are not identical, telling disgruntled employers, uh, telling dis uh, disgruntled employers that they are always free to leave their job, uh, employees that they are always free to leave their job, seems no different in principle from telling political dissidents that they're free to emigrate. Liberalism at wit's end, page 4546. Rothbard in his own way agrees. If the state may be said to properly own its territory, then it is proper for it to make rules for everyone who presumes to live in that area. It can be legitimately it can legitimately seize or control private property because there is no private property in its area because it really owns the entire land surface. 
So long as the state permits its subjects to leave its territory, then it can be said to act as does any other owner who sets down rules for people living on his property. The Ethics of Liberty, page 170. Rothbard argues that this is not the case simply because the state did not acquire its property in a just manner and that its claims over virgin land, both of which violates Rothbard's homesteading theory of property. We'll talk more about this in, the, uh, in, section, uh, in chapter 4, section 1. But Rothbard argues that this defense of statism, the state as property owner, is unrealistic and ahistoric. But his account of the origins of property is, unweak, un, uh, is equally unrealistic and ahistoric. And that does not stop him from supporting capitalism, people in glass houses and all of that. Thus, he claims that the state is evil. And its claims to authority and power false simply because it acquired the resource it claims to own unjustly, for example, by violence and coercion. See Ethics of Liberty, page 171-71 for Rothbard's attempt to explain why the state should not be considered as the owner of the land. But even if the state was the owner of its territory, it cannot appropriate virgin land. Although, as he notes elsewhere, the vast U.S. frontier no longer exists, and there's no point crying over the fact, page 240 for that citation. So what makes hierarchy legitimate for Rothbard is whether the property is deri it derives from was acquired justly or unjustly, which leads us to a few very important points. First, Rothbard is explicitly acknowledging the similarities between statism and capitalism. He is arguing that if the state had developed in a just way, then it's perfectly justifiable in governing or setting down rules those who consent to live on its territory in exactly the same way a property owner does. In other words, private property can be considered as a justly created state. These similarities between property and statism have long been recognized by anarchists and is why we reject private property along with the state. Proudhon did, after all, note that property is despotism as well as property is theft. But according to Rothbard, something can look like a state, i.e. be a monopoly of decision-making over an area, and act like a state, set down rules for people, govern them, impose a monopoly of force, but not be a state. But if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck... Claiming that the origins of the thing are what counts is irrelevant. For example, a cloned duck is just as much of a duck as a naturally born one. A statist organization is authoritarian whether it comes from just or unjust origins. Does transforming the ownership of the land from states to capitalists really make the relations of domination created by the dispossession of the many less authoritarian and unfree? Of course not. Secondly, much property in actually existing capitalism is the product directly or indirectly of state laws and violence. The emergence of both agrarian and industrial capitalism in Britain, and elsewhere, I must add, could not have gotten off the ground without resources of state violence, legal or otherwise. See Brian Morris, Ecology and Anarchism, page 190 for these citations. If state claims of ownership are invalid due to their history, then so are many others, particularly those to which claim to own land. As the initial creation was Ill illegitimate, so are the transactions which have sprung from it. Thus, if state claims of property rights are invalid, so are most, if not all, capitalist claims. If the laws of the state are illegitimate, so are the rules of capitalism. If taxation is illegitimate, then so are rent, interest, and profit. Rothbard's historical argument against the state can also be applied to private property, and if the one is unjustified, so is the other. Thirdly, if the state had evolved justly, then Rothbard would have actually had nothing against it. A strange position for an anarchist to take. Logically, this means that if a system of corporate states evolved from the workings of a capitalist market, then the so-called anarcho-capitalist would have nothing against it. This can be seen from these so-called anarcho-capitalist support for company towns, even, if, even though they have correctly been described as industrial feudalism. Fourthly, Rothbard argue, Rothbard's argument implies that similar circumstances producing similar relationships of domination and unfreedom are somehow different if they are created by just and unjust means. 
Rothbard claims that because the property is justly acquired, it means the authority a capitalist over his employees is totally different from that of a state over its subject. But such a claim has to be false. Both the subject citizen and the employee are in a similar relationship of domination and authoritarianism. As we just previously argued in section, uh, section two of this chapter, how a person got into a situation is irrelevant when considering how free they are. Thus, the person who consents to be governed by another because all available resources are privately owned is in exactly the same situation as a person who has to join a state because all available resources are owned by one state or another. Both are unfree and part of authoritarian relationships based upon domination. And lastly, while these so-called anarcho-capitalism may be a just society, it's definitely not a free one. It will be marked by extensive hierarchy, unfreedom, and government, but these restrictions of freedom will be of a private nature. As Rothbard indicates, the property owner and the state create share in the same uh, authoritarian relationships. If statism is unfree, and then so is capitalism. And have to add now, how just is a system which undermines liberty? Can justice ever be met in a society in which one class has more power and freedom than another? If one party is in an inferior position, then they have little choice but to agree to the disadvantageous terms offered by the superior party. In such a situation, a just outcome will be unlikely as any contract agreed will be skewed to, one favor, uh, to favor one side over the other. The implications of these points are important. We can easily imagine a situation within the so-called uh, so anarcho-capitalist system where a few companies and people start to buy up land and form company regions and towns. After all, this has happened continually throughout capitalism. Thus, a natural process may develop where a few owners start to accumulate larger and larger and larger tracts of land justly. Such a process does not need to result in one company owning the world. It's likely that a few hundred, perhaps a few thousand, could do so. But this is not a cause for rejoicing. After all, the current market in unjust states also has a few hundred competitors in it. And even if there is a large multitude of property owners, the situation for the working class is exactly the same as a citizen under current statism. Does the fact that it's justly acquired property that faces the worker really change the fact that they must submit to the government and rules of another to gain access to the means of life? When faced with anarchist criticisms that circumstances force workers to accept wage slavery, the so-called anarcho-capitalist claims that these are to be considered as objective facts of nature. And so wage labor is not classified as domination. However, the same can be said of states – we're born into a world where states claim to own all the available land. If states are replaced by individuals or groups of individuals, does this, not, does this change the essential nature of dispossession? Rothbard argues that, obviously in a free society, Smith has the ultimate decision-making power over his own just property, Jones over his, etc., page 173. And equally obviously, this ultimate decision-making power extends to those who use but do not own such property. But how free is a free society where the majority have to sell their liberty to another in order to live? Rothbard correctly argues that the state uses its monopoly of force to control, regulate, and coerce its hapless subjects. Often it pushes its way into controlling the morality and the very lives of its subjects. However, he then fails to note that employers do the exact same thing to their employees. This, from an anarchist perspective, is unsurprising, for after all, the employer is the ultimate decision-making power over his property, just as the state is over its unjust property. This, that similar forms of control and regulation develop is not surprising, given the similar hierarchical relationships in both structures. That there is a choice available in states does not make statism any less just or unjust or unfree or free. Similarly, just because we have a choice between employers does not make wage labor any less unjust or unfree. But trying to dismiss one form of domination as flowing from just property while attacking the other because it flows from unjust property is not seeing the wood for the trees. If one reduces liberty, so does the other. 
Whether the situation we're in resulted from just or unjust is irrelevant to the restrictions of freedom we face because of them. And as we argue in section 2.5, unjust situations can easily flow from just steps. The so-called anarcho-capitalist's insistence that the voluntary nature of an association determines whether it is anarchistic is deeply flawed. So flawed, in fact, that states and state-like structures, such as capitalist firms, can be considered anarchistic. In contrast, actual anarchists think that the hierarchical nature of the associations we join is equally as important as its voluntary nature when determining whether it is anarchistic or statist. However... This option is not available to these so-called anarcho-capitalists as it logically entails that capitalist companies are to be opposed along with the state as sources of domination, oppression, and exploitation. Section 2.3 down. Uh... Uh, Ratatosk, um, yeah, I don't do it regularly, but, ah, cool. Um, I'm trying to get through this document for reasons, um, but yeah. Um, all right, let me highlight that just so I can. Um, oof, 2.6 is long. Oh, God, 2.6 is long. There's eight, there's eight sections to chapter two. If I got half of them done, I would be happy. Estrella, the document? Oh, it's long. It's, it's long. Yeah. Um, there's um, 11 chapters to it, and each one has, like, a bunch of sections to it. It's, it's look, to, as for a thing to read out loud, yeah, it's, it's long. It's long. It's hours worth. Um, so, oh, somebody posted a meme. So what do we got? Um, but mod wants to handle that. So we did a redemption. All right. What, how long is 2.4? All right. 2.4 is not bad. Let me get up, move around. It lows our money. Let me get up, move around a little bit. I'm fucking, hang on. Just give me a sec. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, fucking reading, yo. Fucking reading out loud. It's taxing. Oh, go up to a skirt, too. All right, give me a sec. Oh. Oh. All right. Get to reading. Welcome, Gemma. All right. Did somebody do that uh, that timeout? Did uh, did a mod get to that? Hold on, let me check. Um, yeah, they did. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Just want to make sure. How old do you think I am, Zarmani? How old do you think I am? How old do you need me to be? I'll be whatever age you need me to be. Well, thank you. I'm, um, I am almost 40. All right.
Would I get with a 36 year old? I mean, yeah, I have, I do. Yeah. Um, it depends. Czar, there's, there's qualifiers. Um, anyway, let's see. Oh, sweetheart. Boo, boo. Whatever. Um, and generally, I don't bite the pillow. I like I like my moans and my groans to be vocalized. I'm a bit of a, a bit of a moaner, and you know, sometimes screamer, right? Like I don't I don't bite the pillow, right? Like you, I want you to hear it. Right? I want the neighbors to hear it, right? That's the best you have. Like that's. You didn't know that one, Cupcake? Yeah, like fucking amateur. Yeah, it's the dude. It's in, it's in like the the like category of like butt pirate territory. All right, like it's it's fucking like middle school, old school, middle school. Yeah. Um. So, Pookie, Boo Boo, sweetheart. Just nothing. You like? Does this? Does this work? Does this actually like? Does this ever actually work? Do you actually get a rise out of people? Like, do you think this will trigger me? <laughs> wow. All right. I don't think you could comprehend the things that we read on this channel. Sincerely. I don't think you could handle a meta-ethical analysis of so-called anarcho-capitalism. But, you know, hey, why not? Maybe if we set your set expectations higher than what clearly society, your parents, your loved ones, your friends and family, like, have set for you, like, maybe we could you know, get you to rise to the occasion. Maybe, maybe I doubt it. I doubt it, but you know, I, I highly, I highly doubt it, but who knows? Um, mods, I guess, keep an eye on him. What's up? All the dick, man, all the dick, all of it, like all of it. I love the taste of dick. Legitimately. It's great. Scent and smell of a man. It's fucking hot. Yeah. I'm good at it too. I'm fucking really good at it. All the time, man. Fucking all the time. We have DJ and story time on this channel where I tell sexual exploits to the community. We record them. Right? Like you, you just. Bruh. Bruh. You're fucking barking up the wrong tree, man. Proud of it. Fucking proud of it. it feels amazing. It feels really good, actually. You should try it. Anyway. Um, yeah, burger. Just type uh, exclamation reading. There you go. Check the check the reading list, Burger. Um. So, yeah, um, they've got the beginner stuff on there, Burger, and then we've got the sort of like um, intermediate, and then we've got the um, uh, we've got the theory head stuff. Like you should just read these people, and I, I need to expand the uh, re the theory head section. Um, but you know, yeah, like that's straight up. again bruh anyway all right i'm back i'm back at work all right um mm, i'm an amazing cook sourcing i make i'm scratch i fucking make shit from scratch um 
Anybody want to put anybody want to put money? Czar money is anybody put money on the fact that czar money is some like edgy fourteen year old white white kid from the suburbs, right? Like this is this is this is some fucking like edge fourteen year old white kid edge lord shit. <laughs> so sad. Uh, all right. Is it really a brand new fucking account? I didn't even check. Two hours ago. Eh, well. Um, yeah, with I'd bet. Yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Probably 20-ish, but yeah, that level is sad. Uh, all right. Back to it. Um, if you guys, I mean, mods, do what you got to do. You know. Do what you got to do if you need to. Thank you, GL. Um... Anyway, I'm back to it. Oh, what do we got? <laughs> All right. We'll do it. Hey, and there's the anti-Semitism. Like a fucking classic. I just hop from streamer to streamer because I'm bored at making fun of people because it's hilarious that aren't actually enjoying life. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, dude, bring something new. You're boring. Alright. Yeah, it got it got auto modded. Cupcake, it got auto modded. Um, yeah, yeah, I am burger. We're on, uh, we've managed to get sec uh, chapter two, section one, two, and three done so far. We're going into four. Chapter two has eight sections to it. So we're about halfway through. Oof. When Glazy calls you the most boring troll he's ever seen. Rough. Fucking rough. Right? Like, that's fucking, that's rough. Oh. Uh. Uh, I don't want to, yeah, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to fucking risk fucking putting whatever douchey shit on the fucking screen during the reading recording. So we're just gonna, we're going to pull the trigger on that one earlier than we normally would. All right. And again, I suppose uh, mods feel free to keep a friend uh, and I a close eye on our other friend here. Here we go. <clears throat> Chapter two, section four. But truly, transactions on the market are voluntary. <laughs> of course, it's usually maintained by so-called anarcho-capitalists that no one puts a gun to a worker's head to join a specific company. Yes, indeed, this is true. Workers can apply for any job they like, to an extent. But the point is that the vast majority cannot ha avoid having to sell their liberty to others. Self-employment and cooperatives are an option, but they account for less than 10% of the working population and are unlikely to spread due to the for nature of capitalist market forces. Of course, as Bob Black pointed out, right libertarians argue that Quote, one can at least change jobs, but you can't avoid having a job. Just as under statism, one can at least change nationalities, but you can't avoid subjugation to one nation state or another. But freedom means more than the right to change masters. Bob Black, the libertarian as conservative. So why do workers agree to join a company? Because circumstances force them to. 
Circumstances created, we must note, by human actions and institutions, not some abstract fact of nature. And if the world that humans create by their activity is detrimental to what we should value most, individual liberty and individuality, then we should consider how to change that world for the better. Thus, circumstances, current objective reality, is a valid source of unfreedom and for human investigation and creative activity, regardless of the claims of the right libertarians. So let us look at the circumstances created by capitalism. Capitalism is marked by a class of dispossessed laborers who have nothing to sell but their labor. They're legally barred from access to the means of life and so have little option but to partake in the labor market. As, uh, as Alexander Berkman put it, the law says your employer does not sell anything from you because it is done with your consent. But you have agreed to work for your boss for certain pay, he to have all that you produce. Did you really consent? When the highwayman holds his gun to your head, you turn your valuables over to him. You consent, all right, but you do so because you cannot help yourself, because you are compelled or coerced by his gun. Are you not compelled or coerced to work for an employer? Your needs compel you just as the, Hawaii, the highwayman's gun does. You must live. You, cannot, uh, you can't work for yourself. The factories, machineries, and tools belong to the employing class, so you must hire yourself out to that class in order to work and live. Whatever you work at, whoever your employer is, it always comes to the same. You work for someone else. You can't help yourself. You are compelled. Due to this class monopoly over the means of life, the means of production, the means of existence, Workers usually are at a disadvantage in terms of bargaining power. There are more workers than jobs. This is normalized in the labor market for reasons. As was indicated, how does capital capitalism affect liberty? Well, within capitalism, there is no equality between owners and the dispossessed, and so property is a source of power. To claim that this power should be left alone or is fair is, to the anarchists, preposterous. Once a state has been established and most of the country's capital privatized, the threat of physical force is no longer necessary to coerce workers into accepting these jobs, even with low pay and poor condition. To use Ayn Rand's term, initial force, has already taken place by those who now have capital against those who do not. In other words, if a thief died and willed his ill-gotten gain to his children, would the children have a right to the stolen property? Not legally. So if property is theft, to borrow Proudhon's quip, and the fruit of exploited labor is simple, uh, simply legal theft, then the only factor giving the children of a deceased capitalist a right to inherit the booty is the law, the state. As Bakunin wrote, ghosts should not rule and oppress this world, which only belongs to the living. Or, in other words, right libertarianism fails to meet the, char the charge that normal operations of the market systematically place an entire class of persons, wage earners, in circumstances that compel them to accept the terms and conditions of labor dictated by those who offer work. While it is true that individuals are formally free to seek better jobs or withhold their labor in the hope of receiving higher wages, in the end, of their, in the end their position in the market works against them. They cannot live if they do not find employment. When circumstances regularly bestow a relative disadvantage on one class of persons in their dealings with another class, members of the disadvantaged class have little need of coercive measures to get what they want. See Newman, Liberalism at Wit's End, page 130. To ignore the circumstances which drive people to seek out the most beneficial exchange is to blind yourself to the power relationship, uh, relationships inherent within capitalism, power relationships created by the unequal bargaining power of the parties involved. And to argue that consent ensures freedom is false. If you are consenting to be joining a dictatorial organization, you consent not to be free. And to paraphrase, paraphrase Rousseau, a person who renounces freedom renounces being human. Which is why circumstances are important. 
If someone truly wants to join an authoritarian organization, then so be it. It's their life. But if circumstances ensure their consent, then they are not free. The danger is, of course, that people become accustomed to authoritarian relationships and end up viewing them as forms of freedom. This can be seen from the state, which the vast majority support and consent to. And this also applies to wage labor, which many workers today accept as a necessary evil like the state. But as we'll be indicating in section 8.6, the first wave of workers viewed with horror as a form of wage slavery and did all that they could to avoid it. In such situations, all we can do is argue with them and convince them that certain forms of organization, such as the state and capitalist firms, are inherently evil, to use a more biblical term, and urge them to change society to ensure their extinction. So due to this lack of appreciation of circumstances and the fact that people have become accustomed to certain ways of life, so-called anarcho-capitalism actively supports structures that restrict freedom for the many. And how is this so-called anarcho-capitalism anarchist if it generates extensive amounts of hierarchy? It's for this reason that all anarchists support self-management within free association. That way we maximize freedom both inside and outside our organizations. But only stressing freedom outside organizations, so-called anarcho-capitalism ends up denying freedom as such. After all, we spend most of our waking hours at work. If these so-called anarcho-capitalists really desired freedom, then they would reject capitalism and become anarchists. Only in a libertarian socialist society would agreements to become a wage worker be truly voluntary as they would not be driven by circumstances to sell their liberty. This means that while right libertarianism appears to make choice an ideal, which sounds good, liberating, and positive in practice, it's become a dismal politics, a politics of choice where most of the choices are bad. And, well, frankly, to state the obvious, the choices we are free to make are shaped by the differences in wealth and power in society, as well as such things as isolation paradoxes, and the laws and other human institutions that exist. If we ignore the context within which people make their choices, then we glorify abstract processes at the expense of real people. And as importantly, we must add that many of the choices we make under capitalism, shaped as they are by the circumstances within which they are made, such as employment contracts, result in our choice being narrowed to love it or leave it in an organization we create join as a result of these free choices. This ideological blind spot then allows the so-called anarcho-capitalists definition of freedom as absence of coercion as workers freely consent to joining a specific workplace. Their freedom is then unrestricted. But to defend only freedom from in a capitalist society means to defend the power and authority of a few against the attempts of the many to claim their freedom and rights. To quote Emma Goldman, rugged individualism has meant all the individualism for the masters in whose name political tyranny and social oppression are defended and upheld as virtues while every aspiration and, of, and attempt of man to gain freedom is denounced as evil in the name of that same individualism. In other words, it's all fine and well saying, as right libertarians and so-called anarcho-capitalists do, that you aim to abolish force of, from human relationships. But if you support an economic system which creates hierarchy and so domination and oppression by its very workings, defensive force will be required to maintain and enforce that domination. Moreover, if one class has extensive power over another due to the systemic and normal workings of the market, any force used to defend that power is automatically defensive. Thus, to argue against the use of force and ignore the power relationships that exist within and shape a society and so also shape the individuals within it is to defend and justify capitalist and landlord domination and denounce any attempts to resist that domination as initiation of force. 
Anarchists, in contrast, oppose hierarchy and so domination within relationships, bar S&M personal relationships, which are a totally different thing altogether. They are truly voluntary, and they do not attempt to hide the power relationships involved by using economic jargon. This opposition, while also including opposition to the use of force against equals, for example, anarchists are opposed to forcing workers and peasants to join a self-managed commune or syndicate, also includes support for the attempts of those subject to domination to end it. For example, workers uh, workers striking for union recognition are not initiating force. They're fighting for their freedom. In other words, apparently, voluntary agreements can and do limit freedom, and so the circumstances that drive people into them must be considered when uh, deciding whether any such limitation is valid. By ignoring circumstances, so-called anarcho-capitalism ends up by failing to deliver what it promises, a society of free individuals, and instead presents us with a society of masters and servants. The question is, what do we feel moved to insist that people enjoy? formal, abstract, bourgeois self-ownership freedom or a more substantive control over one's life, i.e. autonomy. All right, I think that's as far as I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read tonight. I don't know, let me look at the next section. So let me look at it. Oh, I kind of want to start strong tomorrow. Uh, Yeah. Um, yeah. Maurice Karina, welcome. Welcome to active participation. La 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 la. Uh, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Unique New York, unique New York. She sells seashells by the seashore. Uh, keep the vocal range loose. Thank you, weather. Um, <laughs> Square, I'm just listening as I'm about to go into a Zoom meeting for a scam job and decided after hearing Kai Reed Bakunin that the whole thing is a scam. Is she a capitalist selling sea, uh, seashells? Well, as far as I can tell, she's an independent contractor entire, entirely of her own volition, thus entrepreneurial. Um, I mean, there's an argument to be made that she's privatizing the uh, commons, the seashells. Um, it would have to it would have to undergo some rigorous analysis, but, I mean, technically she is privatizing a, uh, a portion of the commons. So, technically capitalist. Yeah. Oh, the French version. Oof, man, that's a rough one. How much cap can an and cap 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 if an and cap could could cap cap? I think I hit that. I think I hit that one car. Um Uh Diana, it's actually of British origin. The, the term is derived in its original uh, iteration um, from, the, uh, from reference to the British Communist Party of the early 80s, um, supporting, um, well, authoritarian centralizing communism. So, yeah, no, it's, it's not an American thing at all.
Welcome. Uh, oh, geez. Interesting. Um, all right. I want to do the la- I want to do I want to do one more section because the section after this um, is do libertarian capitalists support slavery and the like right out of the gate. Yes, that's that's literally like do liberty do do fucking so-called anarcho capitalists support slavery. Do libertarian capitalists support slavery? Yes. Right. Like I want to start strong with that one tomorrow. So there's one, one section standing between me and that start tomorrow. So, or the next day, whenever I start reading again, right? Um, so I want to get through this next section. Oh, uh, open GL. That's already in my collection. Um, you don't, I don't advertise. Um, don't advertise, tell your friends, get word of mouth. There's no point in advertising a zero viewer stream, like make friends, like go around and fucking talk to other streamers, talk to other people, um, that sort of thing. And then like tell them you're streaming and what you're streaming and what you're about. Right. And then if you've got decent content, if you've got a a personality, they want to, they want to be around, you'll build, you'll build. It takes time too. It takes time. Unless you're a fucking car wreck like has. Um, those of you who know who I'm name checking know who I'm name checking. Um, unless you're a fucking like a train wreck of a fucking streamer. Most people aren't. It's going to take a long time to build an audience. Um, but if you are like if you are like really a fucking train wreck and you come out with some horrible takes and you drum up the drama, you can artificially increase your numbers pretty quickly. Um, I can do a front flip. <laughs> um, I want to see it, Chapa. Oh, all right. A take on, uh, Oh, God, I'd never fucking nail his name. Chuchescu. Um, I'm an anarchist. I don't like dictators. I don't like authoritarians. I don't like states. I don't like, you know, I mean, my take is no, fuck him. Um, <laughs> wither. Um, <laughs> I love how they always go to the job thing. I love how they always go to the job thing. Fucking the dialogue tree of that type of person is so predictable. It's it's quite hilarious, actually. All right. Ceausescu. I look, I dude, Marcus is going to end up like uh fucking Gaddafi's name spelling. Like we're going to end up like having like 97 pronunciations, but just like we have like 97 spellings of Gaddafi's name <laughs> and no one's actually sure about it at the end of the day. <laughs> like legitimately people are still like, I, I don't think that's the spelling. Um, Cheushescu. She she scu. Che u she scu. Yeah. You know what? How about we just go with the authoritarian dickhead with the weird spelling of a last name that Americans can't pronounce correctly, but he's still a fucking authoritarian dickhead and fuck him. Does that work? I feel like that works. 
Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that that might be the workaround. <laughs> All right, one last, <clears throat> one last section. Hopefully, the voice holds for it. Because reading, reading voice is different, right? Like literally, like it uses the vocal, uh, the vocal cords differently. And so it's, dude, sustained nonstop vocalization like that is a thing. Conversationally like this, it's the patterning is different and the usage on the vocal cords is less, um, significantly less. So yeah, reading aloud is actually a fucking, like it's an athletic activity for the vocal cords. Um, Chapo, I love the, I love the random. I love the random. Um, All right. <laughs> Square. Uh, all right. <laughs> now, now. Uh, um, what if your dick is the torso of an angry squirrel? I'd want to see it then. Um, <laughs> I'd want to see it. All right, one last section, y'all. Let me. Oh. All right. Twenty-two year old edgelord, my guess. That or an embittered fucking Gen Xer. Um <laughs> car. <laughs> Their typing skills are very good for age two. I will give them that. Um, all right, here we go. Chapter two, section five, but surely circumstances are the result of liberty and so cannot be objected to. It's often argued by right libertarians that the circumstances we face within capitalism are the result of individual decisions, i.e. individual liberty. And so we must accept them as the expressions of these acts. The most fa famous example of this argument is Nozick's Anarchy, State, and Utopia, page 161 to 163, where he maintains that liberty upsets patterns. This is because whatever situation evolves from a just situation by just, i.e. non-coercive steps, is also by definition just. However, it's not apparent that adding just steps to a just situation will result in a just society. We will illustrate with a couple of banal examples. If you add chemicals, which are non-combustible together, you can create a new combustible chemical, i.e. X does not become non-X by adding new X to it. Similarly, if you have an odd number and add another odd number to it, it becomes even. Again, X becomes not X by adding a new X to it. So it is very possible to go from an just state to an unjust state by just step. And it's possible to remain in an unjust state by just acts. For example, if we try to implement this so-called anarcho-capitalism on the existing unjustly created situation of actually existing capitalism, it would be like having an odd number and adding an even number to it. In other words, the outcome of just steps can increase inequality within society and so ensure that some acquire an unacceptable amount of power over others via their control over resources. Such an inequality of power would create an 
unjust situation where the major, uh, where the majority are free to sell their liberty to others in inequality and in power and resources on the free market. Ignoring this objection, we could argue that, as many so-called anarcho-capitalists and right libertarians do, that the unforeseen results of human actions are fine unless we assume that these human actions are in themselves bad, i.e. that individual choice is evil. Such an argument is false for three reasons. First, when we make our choices, the aggregate impact of these choices are unknown to us and not on offer when we make our choices. Thus, we cannot be said to choose these outcomes, outcomes which we may consider deeply undesirable. And so the fact that these outcomes are the result of individual choices is beside the point. If we knew the outcome, we could refrain from doing them. The choices themselves, therefore, do not validate the outcome as the outcome was not part of the choices when they were made, i.e. the means do not justify the ends. In other words, private acts often have important public consequences, and bilateral exchanges often involve externalities for third parties. Secondly, if the outcome of an individual choice is to deny or restrict individual choice on a wider scale at a, larger, at a later stage, then we're hardly arguing that individual choice is a bad thing. We want to arrange it so that the decisions we make now do not result in them restricting our ability to make choices in important areas of life at a latter stage. Which means we are in favor of individual choices and so liberty not against them. Thirdly, the unforeseen or unplanned results of individual actions are not necessarily a good thing. If the aggregate outcome of individual choices harms individuals, then we have the right to modify the circumstances within which choices are made and or the aggregate results of these choices. An example will be sh uh, will show what we mean. Again, drawn from uh, Hayworth's uh, excellent uh, anti-libertarian, page 35. Um, maybe Haworth, actually, now that I think about it. Um, millions of people across the world bought deodorants, which caused a hole to occur in the ozone layer surrounding the Earth. The resultant of these acts created a situation in which individuals and the ecosystem they inhabited were in great danger. The actual acts themselves were by no means wrong, necessarily, but the aggregate impact was. A similar argument can apply to any form of pollution. Now, unless the right libertarian argues that skin cancer or other forms of pollution-related illnesses are fine, it's clear that the resultant of individual acts can be harmful to individuals. The right libertarian could argue that pollution is an initiation of force against an individual's property rights in their person, and so individuals can sue the polluters, but hierarchy also harms the individual, and so can be considered an infringement of their property rights, i.e. liberty to get away from the insane property fetish of right libertarianism. The loss of autonomy can be just as harmful to an individual as lung cancer, although very different in form. And the differences in wealth resulting from hierarchy is well known to have serious impacts on lifespan and health. As noted in Section 1 of Chapter 2, the market is just as man-made as pollution. This means that the circumstances we face are due to aggregate of millions of individual acts, and these acts occur within a specific framework of rights, institutions, and ethics. Anarchists think that a transformation of our society and its rights and ideals is required so that the resultant of individual choices does not have the ironic effect of limiting individual choice or freedom in many important ways, such as work, for example. In other words, the circumstances created by capitalist rights and institutions requires a transformation of these rights and institutions in such a way to maximize individual choice for all, Namely, to abolish these rights and replace them with new ones. For example, replace property rights with use rights. Thus, Nozick's claim with a claim that Z does not necessarily uh, does not choose voluntarily if other individuals A through Y acted voluntarily and within their rights misses the point entirely. It is these rights that are in question. Given that Nozick assumes these rights, then his whole thesis is begging the question. And we must add, before anyone points it out, that yes, 
Yeah, we're aware that many decisions will unavoidably limit current and future choices. For example, the decision to build a factory on a greenbelt area will make it impossible for people to walk through the woods that are no longer there. But such limitations, if they can be called that of choice, are different from the limitations we are highlighting, namely the loss of freedom that accompanies the circumstances created via exchange in the market. The human actions which build the factory modify reality but do not generate social relationships of domination between people in doing so. The human actions of market exchange, in contrast, modify the relative strengths of any, of everyone in society and so has a distinct impact on the social relationships we voluntarily agree to create. Or to put it another way, the decision to build on the green belt site does not uh, does limit choice in the abstract, but it does not limit choice in the kind of relationships we form with other people, nor create authoritarian relationships between people due to inequality influence the content of the associations we form. However, the profits produced from the, using the factory increases inequality and so market and economic power and so weakens the po- position of the working class in respect to the capitalist class within society. This increased inequality will be reflected in the free contracts and working uh, regime, uh, regimens that are created with the weaker trader having to compromise far more than before. So, To try and defend wage slavery and other forms of hierarchy by arguing that circumstances are created by individual liberty runs around its uh, its own logic. If the circumstances created by individual liberty results in pollution, then the right libertarian will be the first to seek to change those circumstances. They recognize that the right to pollute while producing is secondary to our right to be healthy. Similarly, if the circumstances created by individual liberty results in hierarchy, pollution of the mind and our relationships with others as opposed to the body, although it affects that too – then we're entitled to change these circumstances as well and the means by which we get there, namely the institutional and rights framework of society. Our right to liberty is more important than the right to uh, rights of property. Sadly, the right libertarian and so-called anarcho-capitalist refuses to recognize this. I. We're done reading for tonight. Yeah. Um. Oh, fucking A. All right, do we need to, all right, first off, first off, workflow, 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 re-enable everything. All right, host gets, host gets re-enabled, raids get re-enabled, subs get re-enabled, follows get re-enabled, and the alert system gets turned back on. And then music. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, hey, unauthorized. I'm just taking a moment. I just finished a whole bunch of theory reading. So, I'm just taking a moment to sort of decompress. Um, I mean, probably. I don't believe it, but. Uh, Night, Chapo. Sleep well. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here for Proudly Radical. Since I owe Kai a few favors from back in the old days. Mm. uh, Shit, I probably shouldn't talk about that. Wait, 
Why are you still recording? Fine, fine. Just be sure to edit it out. Anyways, as I was saying, well, this is Alex Jones, and I just wanted to teach the proletariat a few things about anarchism. Anarchism isn't about chaos. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Anarchism is about the people. It's about solidarity and mutual aid. It's about removing unjust authority and hierarchies. We should all be anarchists. The world would be a better place. Now... I'm going to apologize again to all those parents whose lives I ruined because I'm such a douchebag. Jones, out. All right, guy, this has got to make us even for that uh, incident you helped me out with. Um, who asked? Somebody asked. Where did I get the hat? <laughs> um... I was hooking up with this dude, um, an older Dom and top, um, of course. Um, and he wanted, he looked at me and said, um, do you want a fitted cap? And I said, no. He said, I want to fuck you while you wear a fitted cap. I said, well, I need a fitted cap then. Next time I showed up, I had a fitted cap. That's where this cap came from. So where did I get it? Some dude that wanted to see me in a fitted cap while he was fucking me. Of course, he wanted it this way. He was rocking it back. He wanted it rocked backwards. But yeah. It's actually not brown. It's actually black. It's just because of the lighting in here. But it is actually black. It's just because of cloth. It reads it reads brown ish. It's actually black though. <sighs> um oh yeah, anyway, music. Yeah, fuck that song. Why do I feel like nothing Kai owns should ever be under a black blacklight? Um, do you want to know the hilarity of it, uh, Marcus? You know the one area you could probably put under a blacklight and you wouldn't find anything? It's my bedroom. Legit. Yeah. It's my bedroom. You'd be fine. You'd be fine. Everywhere else, though, you probably, yeah, I'd, yeah, yeah, backyard, the kitchen, media room, courtyard, vehicle, other people's places, yeah, um, but yeah, my bedroom would be fine, so I, I don't, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, I don't fuck in my bedroom. The other people don't get to go in my bedroom. That's not a thing. You don't get to go to my bedroom. You don't get to lay in my bed. That's no. <laughs> um, I haven't done it in this neighbor's yard with her. This one I haven't. I've thought about it though. Oh, Marcus, I vacuum and clean regularly. Oh, fuck's sake. I can type, I swear. Went looking. I went looking too. 
Um. All right. I I don't. Skeptic, which one? Wait, wait what are you? What are you referencing, skeptic? Uh. So, anyway. Well, my my brain is burned uh, from fucking having to do any fucking anti cap fucking anti right libertarian theory shit. Um. Oh. Are you talking about the, the fucking, um, the picture that, um, Fertus made for us? So we showed that on stream. Like we literally showed that on stream. So what's your deal, Frosty? Hang on. How old is the account? All right, well, let's check it. I mean, if he did it, he did it on a different account. That's all I can tell you. Wait, hang on. No, 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 never mind. Yeah, he's been here before. <laughs> yeah, he's been here before. Um, not, not bitching about Dave Chappelle, though. Uh, but Cupcake, you have uh, you have interacted with this person before, just FYI. Rev has, Cupcake has, Crix has, yeah, uh, Caboose has. Um, yeah. Seems to be a bit of a bootlicker, for sure. Like having not followed the conversation, but just looking at the the, the chat log here, literally said I would uh, pay money to see the RCMP pistol whip somebody. Um, apparently the nephew of a cop. Definite defender, definite defender of capitalism. Um, definitely, uh, like try to, the commas in my bank account say yes, shit like that. Right, like, I mean, you know, standard Chad logic, standard Chad logic. So whatever. Um, I would like to interact with CMS Frosty. Uh, uh, fucking people spending points. There you go. Um, um, 
Well, I mean, given that... Um, given, given the good faith actors we had on Friday, is it Friday? Is it Friday? Given the good faith actors we had on Friday, right? Like a neocon that was, I mean, RDF was good people, despite the fact that we pegged him with the fucking Christian shit, right? Like he was good people. And then who was before that? Thuggin, Thuggin RIP, right? And he came on, um... And fucking good faith interaction, right? Like, um, I, what do you expect, right? Like, we gotta, we gotta balance the scales. We gotta balance the scales. Of course, we're gonna have, like, you know, some chuttery. Yeah, exactly. It's the universe balancing itself out. So. Not, a, not unsuspected. Um, lovely. 200 million in gold extracted by an Amazonian mining company using illegal licenses. Hey, that's actually a good fucking image. I kind of like this. Um, hang on. Copy image address. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. Hold on. You guys, you, you guys are going to enjoy this. It's a solid image. I put it in uh, memes. If anybody wants a copy, it's in the memes channel on the server. Uh, let's see. Is there any? Is there any headlines that I need to pay attention to today? Facebook knew it was going to uh, use it was being used to incite violence in Ethiopia. Didn't do anything to stop the spread. Documents show. Wow, I'm shocked. Um, Zuckerberg reportedly helped reinstate a video that falsely claims abortion is never medically necessary after caving to complaints of Re Republican politicians. No, I did not, Skeptic. And did you put in what the fuck happened over the weekend, Skeptic? That was... I, I don't... I didn't, I didn't see. You, you asked, like, can I tell... To, like, uh, you'll never believe what I did, what happened over the weekend. Can I tell you something funny? And you never, like, follow it up, man. So I don't... I don't know. Um, Kaiser, this vaccine got me kind of acting kind of fruity. Let me guess, Kaiser, you're wearing fucking cat girl ears and a pink skirt and a, a, a pink collar now because of the vaccine, right? It's because of the vaccine, right? It's because of the vaccine, right, Kaiser? Definitely some cat girl maid outfit because of the vaccine, right? Um, <laughs> oh, Kaiser. You and I could have had fun. If we were, if I was temporally shifted and I was your age, Kaiser, we would, we would, we could have a lot of fun. Um, 
like I'd love to go fucking partying and clubbing with you. Like if I were your age, like I'm not going fucking clubbing and partying. Kaiser, like that shit ain't ever happening. Um, but if I were your age, dude, we'd fucking have a good, we'd have a ball. Like I could, Kaiser and I definitely could party. Like, yeah. Kaiser's my kind of people. <laughs> fucking just a degenerate fuckhead. <laughs> Love you to death, Kaiser. Um, welcome back, Cassidy. Uh, let's see. Um, lovely. Met cop. So Metropolitan Police Force of London, right? The Met. Met cop raped woman as she said stop and accused her of playing hard to get. Oh yeah, Kaiser, we, we could have a fucking debaucherous time together, I'm sure, if I were closer to your age. Fucking go out as a pair and fucking just wrangle a bunch, right? Like we could wrangle a few. Um... Did a semi debate through the chat with streamer. Oh, fucking a. Lilith. Fucking Lilith. Oh, uh, well, I mean, it, I'm not surprised Lilith Fane no, knows nothing. That's not shocking to me. Yeah, I just shat on Lilith Fane on air. I did it. Like, no one class has never done anything to help uh, help the working class. No on the ground activity. Like the literally the first thing that you fucking search. Um, like if if I go to DuckDuckGo right now, hang on, watch this. It'll be the it'll be like the second result. All right, let's do this. Noam Chomsky, uh, sorry Chomsky, um, direct action. Oh, look. Literally the second result. Uh, I really had to go go far. Daniel Ellsberg on joining Noam Chomsky. Howard Zinn at historic anti-war direct action. Right? Like, I mean, you know. Jesus Christ. Just just try, Lilith. Just try. <sighs> Interesting, Estrella. Um, Estrella, I, I may need to know that information so I never accidentally do it either. So you may need to send me that information so I can make sure that others never accidentally do it as well. So feel free to DM me that information, Estrella, or a link or whatever, whatever, you know, I, I would make sure, I want to make sure I never accidentally do it myself. That's for sure. Um. <laughs> Ooh, a reference to the Met. I get to break out a Frankie quote. Good old Frankie. Um, I want Idris as the next James. Uh, Idris is the next James Bond. Would be funny just seeing a black man try and drive an Aston Martin through London. Who's that shooting at us, Bond? I think it's the Met. <laughs> oh. I mean, I can't answer that question, Rev. Like, I can't answer that question. You know that. Uh, doing more can still mean you did nothing. Wow.
there's no the fact that you can see a conversation as a winnable entity frosty tells me loads about your psychology that you see conversations as a winnable event right like that's 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 telling to how you view the world that that's 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 impressive that's impressively like perverted I, I i would almost applaud how how perverted of a definition you have of conversation competitive conversationing yeah like that's that's sad yeah, that's kind of sad like do you do you, is that how you talk to your mom and dad too like is that how you were raised In it, right? Glazy, right? In it, like that's that's rough, man. Like I haven't had a conversation with you. You've been first person to mention the weather winds. Ready, go, um, dude. I haven't had a conversation with you. I haven't been engaging in any dialect uh, dialectical exercise with you. I've used no rhetorical device with you whatsoever. Ch you have been engaging with chat. If you want to come on the air and actually have a conversation. I'd love to have a conversation. I'd love to pick pick apart your brain, right? Like you've you got issue, bro, but that's okay, right? We all got issue. We all got our baggage. We all got our deal. But the fact that you think you're like well adjusted and normal is probably the problem, like the starting point for the problem. So if you want to come on the air and actually have a conversation, by all means, we'll make that happen. Have you know I won breakfast just this morning? Exactly, Marcus. I, hyper competitive. It's a trapezoid. Fair enough. I dig it. Trapezoid's a good shape. Uh, All right, then come on the air and win. All right, I'll 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 appeal to your competitive nature. I have a winning mentality. Come win. Come show me how you win. I, 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 I look forward to basking in the glory that is your winning mentality. Come on. I mean. Tormented. You are tormented into different questions. You also have a victim mentality, apparently, as well. Oh, and you, you wanted, you wanted the focus. You wanted the energy. You wanted the attention. So let's do it. Come on, man. You didn't come here for fucking chat. You came here for me. Right? Like that's that's what this shit's about, right? This channel's cameras on me. Let's do this, man. Let's get on the air. Have the conversation. Let's talk about it. Oh, well, in that case, they don't want to talk to you. They've been timing you out over and over, bro. They don't like you. So you're literally the type of dude who just goes to a place no one likes him. Yeah, definitely a winner. Um I mean, yeah, that's skeptic. That's a terrible counter argument, right? Like that's a terrible counter argument, but I mean, I wouldn't expect anything different from her. So I mean, that's, that's like lower end middle class, depending on where you are. Like that's, that's the, the, the lowest you can get for like middle class. If you're making like 93 bra. It's kind of sad. Have you ever thought about trying harder? 
like some of that bootstrap shit, right? Like you're not that winning. Like you're not, you're not even making six figures, right? Are you a winner at like five figures? Just saying. Yeah, this is a hobby for me, man. This is just a form of activism for me. It's a way for me to teach people about anarchism. I mean, I'd fucking drop like 400 bucks on a mic arm, man. Right? Like, I got, I got thousands of dollars worth of gear in here. Remote controlled fucking studio lights and shit like that, right? Like, trust me, you don't want to play the capitalist fucking dick measuring game with me. You don't. Homie started on on a mainframe terminal at age four. I was doing custom programming for two hundred dollars an hour by age fourteen, bro. You do not want to do the capitalist dick measuring game with me. I'm better at it than you. I'm better at it than you. Just just believe. Trust that. Right. So. Yeah. Like. This isn't, this isn't a career, this isn't a job. This is just a thing I do to build a community and engage and teach people about anarchistic organizing modalities and methods of operation to impart a, a sort of linguistic philosophical set of information and ideals that I carry with me. Uh, feel free to mark off your bingo card for torchbearer. I'm a, I see myself as a torchbearer of ideas that are their time for fruition has not come yet because humanity isn't ready for them. There's too many people like you walking around, quite frankly. But yeah. And on the side, I deal with like food, not bombs and, you know, feed homeless people and that sort of stuff. Right. And engage in other forms of direct action back in the day. Right. I try to keep my nose clean from those these days, but I do teach others about how to, <clears throat> you know, sometimes keep their hands clean. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've do, I've done segments on operational security for the activist and things like that. Right. This is, yeah. So for me, yeah, this is kind of winning. Yeah. Oh, you don't have Torchbearer? I'm sorry. So. Oh, all right. Give me, give me a second to get some Foucault with her. Give me a second to get some Foucault. All right, Wither, I'm going to do a primer to Foucault rather than Foucault himself. So it would be some Foucault in here, but this is literally a primer to Foucault. So makes it easier. Um, all right, let me... Give me a sec. And of course, after I've just read so much fucking theory, right, Wither? And I said, I'm like, it's hard on the voice to read fucking theory or read. And you fucking make me read some more. It's very considerate of you. Just shitting on you, Wither. Uh... Uh, very, Gary Gutting did a Foucaultian uh, very short introduction. Um, Buddhist. The very short introduction series is great if you want a fucking collection of them. All right. Um, <clears throat> we may do madness. 
Crime and punishment. No, that's where Foucault gets weird. That's where Foucault gets weird. <sighs> yeah, why don't we start here? Because he was a homosexual, writing a history of modern sexuality must have been a particularly personal enterprise for Foucault. His biographers suggest that as an adolescent, he suffered from having sexual interests that French society of the 1940s and 50s regarded mostly as shame or with shame or outrage. Even the generally tolerant milieu of the École Numérale uh, were, was not entirely hospitable to homosexuality. Foucault made it, uh, made it clear that one of his reasons for accepting a job in Sweden was the hope, not entirely fulfilled, of finding a more open sexual climate. Even though the details of Foucault's sex life remain sketchy, and why shouldn't they, there is every reason to think that the experience of gay marginality is an important part of his life. On the other hand, he was unwilling to accept the identity of homosexual as he was any other identity. He seldom wrote or spoke on the record as a gay man, and when he did, for example, in a few interviews with gay publications, his attitude towards the activist gay community is more of a sympathetic observer than a committed participant. He was most attracted by what, uh, what he sees as recent gay explorations of new forms of human community identity. In any case, homosexuality was just one of many topics to be covered by Foucault's History of Sexuality, which, in addition to a, uh, a volume called Perverts, would also have volumes on children women, and married couples. Moreover, his general introduction to the project, the only volume of the series actually published, shows that, as in Discipline and Punish, his treatment would expand beyond marginalized group to everyone in modern society. In fact, it seems clear that from the beginning, Foucault's work on sexuality was developing a dimension beyond that of power relationships. It was becoming a history of the formation of subjects in not only a political but also a psychological and ethical sense. The starting point, however, is, Foucault, is still Foucault's conception of modern power, which is mostly explicitly set out in Volume 1 of The History of Sexuality. As a result, Foucault's initial treatment of sexuality is a fairly straightforward extension of the genealogical method of discipline and punishment. The a method is applied to the various modern bodies of knowledge about sexuality, sciences of sexuality, in order to show their intimate association with power structures of modern society. The focus of this aspect of Foucault's discussion is what he calls the repressive, a repressive hypothesis. This is the most common assumption that the primary attitude of modern society towards sex, beginning in the 18th century reaching a peak in the Victorian age, and still exerting strong influence today, was negative. That except for the closely delim uh, delimited sphere of monogamous marriage, sexuality was opposed, silenced, and as far as possible, eliminated. Foucault does not defy, uh, deny the act of uh, the fact of repression. The Victorian age covered bosoms, censored literature, and waged vi vigorous campaigns against masturbation. But he denies that modern power is primarily exercised through repression, and that opposition to repression is an effective way of resisting modern power. Rather, he thought that modern power created new forms of sexuality by inventing discourses about it. For example, although same-sex relations have occurred throughout human history, this, uh, the homosexual as a distinct category with defining psychology, physiology, and perhaps even genetic characteristics, in his opinion, was created by the powered knowledge system of modern sciences. According to, uh, according to Foucault, sexual repression was a superficial phenomenon. Far more significant is the veritable discursive explosion of talk about sex that began in the 17th century with the Counter-Reformation legis legis legislation on the practice of conf uh, confession. Penitents were required to examine their consciences with a thoroughness and nuance previously unheard of. It was not enough to say I slept with a woman other than my wife. You had to say how many times, just what sort of acts were involved, and whether a woman w was herself married. Nor was it enough to report overt actions. Equally important were thoughts and desires, even if not carried out. But even here, it was not enough to say, I thought about sleeping with a woman other than my wife. You, had to, had to, uh, you also had to determine if you had dwelt on the thought, found, it enjoyment, uh, found enjoyment in, in it rather than rejecting it immediately, and if you had entertained it, whether this was done with a certain inadvertence or a full consent of the will. All these factors were needed for the confessor to determine the degree of guilt, for example, mortal versus ve uh, venial sin, impose an appropriate penance, and give advice for moral improvement. The result of the penitence was an even deeper and more precise self-knowledge, the outcome of a hermeneutics of the self that re uh, revealed as fully as possible their inner sexual nature. Foucault's suggestion, however, is that this nature is not so much discovered as constituted by required by self-examination. 
What I am sexually depends on the categories I'm required to use in making my confession. So there you go. Uh, Uh, Estrella, just stop talking about it in chat, please, and thank you. Just just leave it there. Just leave it there. Look, there's there's avenues to talk about that, Estrella, and if you want to talk about it, just, just leave it. Leave it here, please, and thank you. Um, I am now more interested in Foucault. Um... Uh, cat, I, I'm telling you, he's a really interesting dude, despite the letter, right? Uh, but yeah, no, he said he wrote a series of volumes basically, and he starts with the power dynamic analysis and then he moves on to other topics, um, that he felt interest towards and he would just dive into them. But ultimately he always applied this Foucaultian power dynamic analysis that was so prevalent. And so he ultimately like yeah he he basically built his own his own lens of analysis to which he could effectively peel apart that he could dissect and analyze the pieces of a power dynamic and like he created his own toolkit and then he just went around society and like looked at stuff with it like that they live sunglasses just mm, okay um Yeah. Uh, let's see. Chronological bibliography of the works of Michel Foucault. Um, History of Madness came first. Birth of the Clinic, the Order of Things, the Archaeology of Knowledge and Discourse on Language, Discipline and Punish, the Birth of Prison, and then the History of Sexuality, Volume 1, Introduction, Volume 2, The Use of Pleasure, and Volume 3, The, the Care of Self. He has interspersed other works of course uh death in the labyrinth this is not a pipe i pierre river have slaughtered my mother my sister and my brother brother a case of uh parasite in the 19th century herculean barbin being recently discovered memoirs of a french hermaphrodite disorderly families infam infamous letters from the bastille archives he's got interviews and that sort of things and lectures he said a bunch of lectures um but the primary works of, of Foucault started with the history of madness and this uh, this introspective analysis of of uh, like hang on fucking Jesus Christ um yeah anyway um this sort of like introspective analysis of the 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 history of um, mental institutions social sciences and the ramifications on society and sexuality therein and so he was immediately looking at unjust like uh, unbalanced power dynamics in society and how they the ramifications of those power dynamics uh and w what those end up looking like um if you want uh, cat i'd recommend the um stanford encyclopedia of philosophy site for michel foucault start there um, and then go read his stuff if you want. But yeah, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is usually a very good starting point for a lot of these dudes. Um, yep. Um, uh, yeah, and Andre, but do, do we have a title for it? Do we have a title for it? What's the, the volume for? Um, I mean, here's, here's the Stanford Encyclopedia of, uh, Philosophy, just straight up. It's called plato.stanford.edu, but here's the Foucault entry, cat. Oh my God, uh, Kirk 
Confessions of the Flesh, The History of Sexuality, Volume 4. Okay, cool. Well, I'll have to get around to Volume 4 eventually. It's going to be way down the list, but I'll have to get to it. Uh... Foss, is that you? <laughs> That's fucking Alani. Why would I throw a stream party for, like, why would I? Dude, it's going to be a sad day when Chomsky dies. There's a man who's dedicated his life to intellectual pursuits and understanding the linguistic impact, uh, the impact of linguist linguistic normative values on society and overthrowing power, unjust power dynamics. Why would I throw a party on stream? Uh, celebration of life. Uh, you know, we'll mention it, but it's going to be sad. Like, I don't, dude, those, I don't buy into that celebration of life shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, that, that's fucking, we'll celebrate their life. It's going to be a bummer no matter what. Right? Like, that's, it's depressing when somebody fucking dies. I, that's not like you know as much as much as you want to fucking spin it yeah it's always depressing oh fuck me what um oh, I suppose I have to reply to that I mean, have have whatever you fucking want. I hate life. <laughs> oh, cat. Those have uh, probably already exist, but you know, I feel you. Why? Why does it never fucking remember that Twitch? <sighs> All right. Oh, we did a bunch of theory. We did a bunch of fucking reading. Now, like, I don't know. I kind of just want to get rid of him. Like it, it just it doesn't bring anything to the table. Um, Zippy got bingo off of a pivot. Interesting. Not bad. Let's see it. What you got? You know what? Hang on. Let me just pop it into a browser. So what do we get? Caboose misspelled something. Alex Jones, pain complaints, pivot, and NSW, uh, NSFW advice. Yep. Did this one too. Did this one too. Did this one too. We got a Breen as well. You could have technically marked off IT as well as Rentier class, uh, technically, although I didn't say it. I don't know if I have to say it. Um, oh, you could have marked, I don't know if you were here, but fucking the dude earlier, like you could have marked that's not what anarchism is. Um, AJ, we did AJ. Technically, no, oh, no. No. Okay, so you could have marked IT. You could have marked AJ. That's not what anarchism is. And maybe rentier class. But either way, yeah, it's bingo across the board. Congratulations, Zippy. Um... Yeah, close close to the meme. Real close to the meme. Um, I kind of like, dude, it's... Dude, the reading takes it out of me. 
the reading takes it out of me. You know what? That's four hours plus a reading. Fuck it. Who cares? Um, who's got somebody? Oh God, Demon Mama! Like, how the fuck? How who? How many fucking people go to fucking watch that shit? That is astounding to me. Um. Did I? I don't even know at this point, Square. If you say so, sure. Um, how is that not? I mean, right here, let me just fucking... Dude, there's just guaranteed to miss some. There's too many fucking to name. Hey, okay, like, it's fucking missed a bunch, too. <laughs> it's a bunch. Uh, no, never talked to that person. Be great if the rest of their page fucking loaded too. A pastor who likes to game. A peculiar pastor because I drink and I cuss. But only over Twitch if the occasion especially warrants it. Is he playing uh yeah, he's playing coder? Fuck it. done <sighs> really really yeah it's like 58 fucking people watching 37 are gonna raid I swear to god I better see that number go up that's all I gotta say Um, fucking sad, sad, sad. And Andre, thank you for the follow. It said it goes down one and then goes up. Then it goes down. Yeah, fucking. Either way. Tomorrow is a late show. Tomorrow is, um, tomorrow it's going to be like you guys, I have after DGen activity. So I'm going to go fucking do a DGen activity and then I will have you guys afterwards. So yeah, tomorrow. Yep. Catch you guys later. I'm going to go, I'm going to go make a fucking, I don't know, like a bison ribeye or something like that. I'm fucking hungry. So I'll catch y'all later.